All right, we're good. All right, good evening, everyone. It is Friday, April 19th, and I call this meeting of the Brookfield Select Board to order at 6.20 p.m. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, the one announcement is that we uh, the meeting is being recorded. Uh, the town is recording, and Mr. Kelleher is recording with the spaceship. And well, the, the people, well, the people on the home video can see his little spaceship camera. Is anyone else recording? No. Excellent. All right. So we are now moving on to agenda item number one: town administrator candidate interview. Brian Sawyer. Brian, come on down. Thank you very much for having me. No worries. Pleasure. Have a seat. Right Have a seat. Yes. All right, um, Chris. Yes, sir. Can you make sure that these microphones Absolutely. are picking up Brian enough, or have um, you? Yeah. So Brian, can you just say, "Hey, Brian, what's your name?" My name is Brian Sawyer. All right. It could be better. Give him oh, one. Oh, yeah. Give him one. I can. There I can go. use my outside voice. Brian I Sawyer. <laughs> we can turn it. Test. All right. Yeah. Just want to. I was just concerned with the two microphones here, none there. The uh, the, the the home audience would, would miss out on your participation. Yeah, absolutely. So, so thank you for coming on uh, on rather short notice, but we're looking to uh, get this position filled. And so um, I guess uh, why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um, so as I had said, Brian Sawyer. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of the town of Shirley. Um, I'm currently uh, finishing up my second full term um, in the town of Shirley as a member of the uh, select board. Uh, previous to that, I've been on you know an array of different boards and committees, um, specifically um, as a uh, member of the finance committee, uh, chairman of the finance committee, pr directly prior to being um, on the select board. Uh, as far as professionally, uh, the last 15 years, um, I've been the general manager of the Bull Run Restaurant. Um, you know, it's a large, larger uh, restaurant. Uh, it's been in my family since 1946. Uh, and um, I'm looking to, you know, transition out of the restaurant business. Um, you know, not, not completely, it's, you know, it's a family <laughs> business, but um, I've been working over the last couple months where I'm just looking for more of a traditional work schedule. Mm -hmm. um, so, I saw an opening and and submitted my resume and cover letter. Okay, thank you. It's like um, I know that uh, in Brookfield we've uh, uh, the uh, town our town administrator um, Kelly. Her contract was scheduled to end at the end of this year, mm -hmm. and uh, she uh, found and she she found what I would say was a better opportunity uh, working over in the over in Leicester. Okay. And so when that opened up, it's like she she had intended to stay with us till the end of the uh, end of her contract, end of June. But when a better opportunity comes along, it's like you can't can't always uh, not take it. Yep. Right. Um, does he, do either of you two have prepared questions? Because I, I do. <laughs> Excellent. Could you lead us off, Brad? <laughs> Figure out which one I want to start with. Mm -hmm. Uh. Do you have experience working with intermunicipal agreements and what's your approach to regionalization? Um, so actually, so a lot of the, um, I saw a lot of similarities between Brookfield and the town of Shirley, mm -hmm. um, you know, population, budget, you know, budget wise, um, you know, one of the biggest similarities that I saw is, you know, we're both rural communities where about 90% of, you know, the revenue comes from, you know, residential property taxes. Um, and so uh, we regionalized or had intermunicipal agreements um, on multiple occasions. So in 2012, when I was on the finance committee, um, or, or right prior to when I was on the finance committee, um, we entered into regionalization as far as our school system. Uh, it seems very similar to, to your um, mm -hmm. scenario here in Brookfield. Our elementary schools are separate. Um, you know, we, we began in 2012. Um, and we've been doing very well ever since. Uh, we also are part of a, an additional regional system, uh, the Neshoba Valley um, Regional Tech, Technical High School. Um, several years ago, uh, our communications, um, we were looking for a communications upgrade. 
Um, and part of that region, uh, the Air Shirley Regional School District, we've always had a great partnership with uh, the town of Air. And so uh, we regionalized just several years ago as far as our communications. Um, we've had intermissible agreements uh, with a very unique community. Um, it's what used to be the former Fort Devons, which is made up of um, land of the towns of Harvard, or historical land, of the towns of Harvard, Air, and Shirley. And so uh, I think three years ago, uh, we had a vacancy um, right before winter um, with our DPW director. So we entered into a temporary intermunicipal agreement with that. Um, and uh, we've had intermunicipal agreements uh, as far as um, <coughs> leasing land uh, with, with the community of Devons. So um, a, a fair amount, um, mm -hmm. both as a select board member and as a finance committee member. Right. And when you say communications, could you, I'm not getting a clear idea of what you mean when you say So that. as far as dispatch, you know, mainly okay. if, if we're talking, you know, our 911 service for um, police and fire. <coughs> so um, instead of reinvesting, um, you know, uh, separately, we were both looking to upgrade our, our communications, you know, system. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we kind of pulled our resources and upgraded that, um, you know, together. And it seemed to be seamless. Um, you know, it, it's located, the communications uh, center is actually located in air, but um, it's the, the town over, um, mm -hmm. and, and it seems to be working well for, for both towns. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, question I have is, um, what, do you, what do you see as the, um, for, uh, spe specifically with regards to the Brookfield Town Administrator position, what do you see as the uh, as the biggest challenges and I would say the biggest, yeah, they got that covered from what you see coming into the position? Um, as far as, you know, some of the challenges, I think it's going to be a lot of the same that, that Shirley faces. Um, you know, you're a rural community. Um, how do you, uh, you know, offer, you know, the appropriate services with limited, you know, revenue? Um, how do you maintain your rural character and aspect, um, you know, without either bringing in, you know, unwanted development that you, you know, that may bring in revenue, but you might not want. I think you have to have a balanced approach with that. Um, you know, but kind of speaking to that, I think what you seem to have covered is, you know, it, it seems to be, um, you know, obviously I was here, uh, for the first screening, but I also, um, had come to kind of drive around, familiarize myself, and it seems like a very, you know, quaint, you know, uh, rural community, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you want my traditional questions or do you want my non-traditional Which, questions? Whichever you prefer. Whichever I prefer, okay. I am gonna save a non-traditional question for later that I've picked up from some panel interviews that I've done with my company recently. All right. Okay. Um, I realized we didn't actually introduce ourselves, which is usually one of the, like, the standards when you're doing a panel interview. Um, I bet. <laughs> Brian, you, you, you functionally introduced yourself. Um, so do you wanna go through and do some quick introductions? Uh, yes, uh, I'm Tom Regan. I'm the uh, current chair of the select board. And let's see. And this is uh, Brad Kudelski, he's our vice chair, and Beth Coughlin, who is our clerk. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so, it sounds like you, <coughs> you've, it sounds like you've served both on the select board and with your finance committee, is it a finance committee? Correct, yeah. Okay. So, there's a lot of different types of members of those sorts of boards. Can you describe what sort of member you were relative to your time on the finance committee and then relative relative to your time on the select board um you know so i've i've served as um you know the several years prior to um joining the select board on the finance committee uh, i was the chair um so i kind of took on a leadership role in that in that position um but i think in any position that i've that I've held, you know, within town, or whether it's, you know, my personal profession, um, I feel like um, some of the qualities that I bring tend to be, you know, more reason, logic, um, 
uh, that type of approach. Uh, you know, and, and obviously there's, there's going to be an array of different um, personalities to deal with. And, you know, I think working through those, um, you know, calmly and, you know, reasonably always tends to, to be the most successful in my experience, so. Um, if you were going to describe your level of knowledge of things like mass general law associated with small communities, uh, the uh, intricacies of town budgeting, the you know end of year recap, making sure that people are checking the right boxes from a standpoint of interaction with treasurer, accountant, mm -hmm. department heads. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, how you see the role of town administrator, like in and amongst that. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I think being the kind of the main point of contact, um, kind of the person that's bringing it all together collaboratively. Um, so, you know, depending on, you know, when this position would start, Obviously, I know you have um, annual town meeting, annual town election coming up. You know, obviously, my assumption is you've worked with, you know, your advisory committee and and you know your uh, staff to make sure that you know you have to have your warrant articles, um, you know, posted and approved um, at a certain time period. I, I you know would assume that you've worked um, significantly on your budget at this point, um, you know, and that you have your your warrants. Um, you know, for the for the election uh, posted. Um, working after that, you know, I think the next step would be to make sure at the year end, as you're approaching um, year end, that you're making the appropriate you know budget transfers to clear out um, you know that the current year's budget. I think directly after that, um, you know, you'd work in the fall to work on the recap to make sure that you have your free cash submitted uh, in in time. And then I think you come right into December, which, um, at least in, in my experience, you'd start at a very high level, kind of the budget process again, where you're meeting um, with your department heads um, at a more strategic level um, to talk about their needs, uh, to, to talk about capital needs, things of that nature. Um, you know, so I've had a fair amount of experience. Um, you know, not only my time on the finance committee and the select board, I do have a financial background, um, a master's in accounting, um, and a bachelor's degree uh, in business administration with a concentration in accounting. Um, I also served on the budget coordinating committee, and I was on, uh, we got a grant while I was on the finance committee through the Collins Center, which was a, you know, comprehensive financial management grant um, to create financial policies. And, you know, I, I was, I know in my first screening, um, I was talking about, you know, some of the things that I'm very proud of. One of the things, and, and you know, it's um, across a whole spectrum of items, but one I would definitely say would be um, the financial stability that we brought to the town. Uh, when we first regionalized, I can tell you uh, with, the, with the Air Shirley school system, it was very difficult. Um, Regionalization was the best thing I think we've done in our communities in a long time. Um, but for us to do that, we had kind of a, a phase in where we were dealing with, um, you know, assessments that were... Storming, forming, yeah, norming, yeah. and forming, right? That um, storming is pretty brutal yeah, up front, right? And, and yeah. you know, the last several years, um, we've been able to present balanced budgets. The assessment with the school systems have been coming in very reasonable. Um, we've been providing those um, balanced budgets without using any one-time money, free cash, reserves. Um, we brought, when we, when we wrote those financial policies, I was, I was thinking, well, these are great and I'm glad we got the grant from the Collins Center, but I just don't foresee Shirley realistically meeting these. And, and you know, the biggest would be, you know, part of the reserves. It was, you know, our goal would have 10% in our stabilization. Um, We've exceeded over 10% over the last several years. Um, this year we have, our, our budget's 17 million. Um, we have, if our transfers go through um, from free cash for annual town meeting, as I suspect they will, um, we'll have uh, 1,800, 1,000, 1,800, 
1,875,000 in, in regular stabilization. Um, capital stabilization will be 475,000. Um, and then the last two years, uh, we created um, two specialty stabilization accounts. One is to um, address our kind of long-term facilities, um, and that it will be approaching um, 450,000. And we're, we created at our special town meeting in the fall um, a special stabilization account for debt management, um, and we'll be putting $100,000 into that. Um, so I, I feel like, um, you know, financially, uh, we've been making a, a significant amount of progress in Shirley, and I, I feel that's been my strongest background with, within, um, you know, my roles within town. So. Great. Thank you for that. Yeah. Does Shirley have a town administrator? We do. Um, so I was the chair of the town administrator search committee. Um, so I know the <laughs> familiar with the process. Um, that was back in 2018, mm -hmm. um, and we've had a, a town administrator uh, for for a significant period prior to that. Um, but uh, this town administrator has been with us since 2018. So. Mm -hmm. And then for the uh, town, so the does the town is uh, so the town administrator does handles the uh, day to day. Correct. So. Management. Yeah, I mean, um, as far as uh, you know, uh, this, you know the select board. Um, you know, I, I feel as though we're working intricately with with um, the town administrator to to set policy and, and you know kind of long term goals and strategy as far as um, running the day to day. Um, of course, I'm getting updates on those on my way here. Um, I got an update both from the town administrator and uh, and the chief that unfortunately we have a. A missing persons um, notice, which okay. I, you know I hope is resolved. You know by the time I'm <laughs> out of the meeting, um, or if not sooner, um, you know. And, and so, as a select board member, I've been you know aware of day to day operations. Um, you know, but the town administrator's role, I would say, would be you know to take care of the day to day and update the select board um, appropriately, which I think I found. Um, we've been very fortunate in Shirley where we've had the town administrator for uh, for six years. Um, our police chief, fire chief, um, they've been with us for, for decades. Um, perhaps not exactly in that role. They have been for, for a while. Same with the DPW director, the library director. Um, and so I feel like we have a really good balance of, of understanding between, and the select board members change, obviously, but, you know, knowing what we need to be updated for, um, just having that balance of, of, you know, making sure that we're aware, but at the same time, having the town administrator run the day-to-day -day operations. So. Mm -hmm. And then, does does your town administrator uh, do they do they have authority to uh, to hire and do evaluations, or do those do, are those reserved by the select board? So uh, they do evaluate evaluations. Um, you know, the, the department heads tend to do the evaluations of their department, which, you mm -hmm. know, I think is appropriate as, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not in law enforcement, I'm not in fire science. Um, and, you know, the town administrator is working with, um, you know, coordinating with, with the department heads and all employees and, you know, monitoring them and, and giving us updates and assessing. Um, but as far as hiring and firing, um, Typically, I rely on the department heads to give recommendations. Um, more so, the the town administrator would be giving recommendations based on you know whether it be clerical or um, you know going through a, the hiring process of a of a town account town um, you know uh, you know treasurer collect uh, treasurer collector things of that nature. Um, but the, the hiring, firing, disciplinary action, that does come from the select board. Mm -hmm. okay. um, union contracts, you know, same thing. Um, or, or negotiations actually for whether it's union contracts or, um, you know, department heads. Uh, we're working with the town administrator, but um, we're essentially, as a select board, executing those um, and finalizing them. How do you envision 
working with the employees in the town and how do you any idea of how to motivate them not that they're not motivated or, what, or what's his leadership style right your leadership style and how do you plan on collaborating all of them with the select board so i i think that one of the first things to do um in general would be you know if, if being hired as a town administrator it would be you know meeting um you know the department heads, the town employees, and, and getting a sense of, you know, what are the, you know, what are the needs um, of the town um, on on a short term basis, on a long term basis, on a capital basis. Um, you know, kind of understanding understanding that. Um, you know, I think uh, especially in a small town, I, I think you know you need to be available to to work with different employees or, or obviously residents. I mean, that's obviously the, the main goal of, and function of, of town hall is to make sure that we're providing, you know, the appropriate service to the residents. Um, so it's very typical, um, you know, that you're approachable to the residents, so you're approachable to, uh, you know, the staff. I, um, as the general manager of, you know, my, my business, um, you know, it's part of my job as general manager is to go, even this day and age with all the modern technologies, to go to the actual bank and post office. Both are located right next to each other in, in Shirley. And so every day, um, you know, I go and I run into residents and they always have, you know, not always, but, you know, every once, every once in a while they raise concern. Um, it's like our transfer and, station. And they see me as, you know, accessible. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that would be kind of the same approach that I would, that I would bring. Okay. I have two very different questions, if, if you all don't mind me going mm -hmm. two, two in a row. The first Go is, um, talk to me about what's good turnover and what's bad turnover. Um, so I think, you know, in general, in 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 town, in, in municipal government, especially in a small town, I don't think it's uncommon to have some turnover. Um, I think part of the challenges would be, you know, financial, but I don't think they're all of the challenges. I think um, I can tell you that part of the reason that uh, we that I that I ran for uh, select board in Shirley was the town was going through a significant amount of turmoil. Um, we had, uh, we were incorporated in 1753 and we had two s sitting select, uh, select board members, uh, recalled, um, which was the first time in, in the town's history. Um, we had, uh, a significant amount of long, long time employees leave. Um, we had a town administrator that I think was, you know, um, you know, perhaps a little bit misunderstood. Um, but also perhaps using, you know, not, not the best approach or at least how, how certain residents or employees felt. Um, and it just seemed to be, a, you know, very, um, it was more chaotic than it needed to be. And so I thought, um, you know, running, um, you know, kind of bring more of a calming approach. And, I, you know, I... In my time there, it's it's been more successful. Um, I talked to you about certain department department heads that have been there for a while, but I think um, you know employees kind of follow that that tune, and I, I feel as though if it's a comfortable working environment, um, you're going to have some turnover. I don't you know that's never that's I think always going to be a challenge for local municipal government, um, but I do think that you can minimize it. I also think you know an example would be, I, I think our chief um, of police is getting to the point where he's almost um, overqualified. Um, and, uh, you know, he's, 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 he's a, he's a, he's a, uh, a loss risk just by virtue of that there's other opportunities out there. Exactly, and so um, one example would be at um, last annual town meeting, um, you know, we're pretty, limited what we can offer financially at this point. Um, and uh, I, I think he's fairly compensated. I think he thinks so, which is why he's been with us for a while. Um, you know, but one thing that we were able to do that was not a, you know, specifically monetary uh, situation was um, 
we promoted him or our town meeting, I guess, promoted him or gave him the authority to be a strong chief. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we thought that was fair based on he'd been, you know, serving the town in a you know so similar capacity or, or length as the fire chief. The fire chief had always been a strong chief. And, you know, I think that, you know, helped him understand the confidence we have in him. Um, and he's been with us, you know, um, well, at least now coming up on another year, so. Generally, in interviews like this, somebody will ask you, what's your greatest achievement? I'm going to ask you the opposite question. Tell me about the, the time that basically, if you were telling this, this story, you would say, no kidding, there I was. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no. But you understand what I'm saying, like, uh, like, yeah. like, cause I, cause I, I have my, I, 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 I won't talk about it on cam. I won't talk about it on camera because it's not my interview. But I have my story for every interview. That is, what, what was my most glorious failure? What yeah. was your most glorious failure? Um. Well, I will say that over time, I was able to, to turn into a success. But um, originally. Um, you know, I think we took uh, the, it when we regionalized, you know, part of what we've been doing is, um, you know, upgrading the schools. We we renovated the, the high school and um, we had a fields project, um, which our our high school athletic complex or field had not been updated um, since I think the 1960s. And, and that that's not an exaggeration. Um, and so for me, that was, uh, my, my mother was an educator and, you know, that was just something that I thought, you know, the school and the region has been going in such a positive direction, um, that it just seems to me that it, it's, it's guaranteed that this, you know, that this will pass, you know, it required a debt exclusion. Um, and understandably, um, you know, some residents are, anytime you have a debt ex exclusion or an override, there's going to be some residents that are concerned about it. Um, and I felt as though, you know, perhaps we pushed it through a little too quickly. It, it did not pass. Um, we kind of went back to the drawing board and made slight adjustments and it didn't pass again. Um, which I would say, you know, especially cause I was such a proponent, um, you know, I was, you know, disappointed. Um, and I thought, you know, what's what is this approach that we've been taking and you know finally um you know the the way that we were able to become successful um because i i had mainly been the chairman of the finance committee at the time um and i just become a member of the select board and my kind of third approach um was to you know not try and go completely head to head with you know those that were opposed to it but to actually bring them closer, um, I was able to arrange meetings, you know, with the main opponents of them, uh, of, of the field complex. Um, and we had, you know, special meetings with, um, you know, the contractor and, and the engineers and the school administration to see if we could implement some of the, the things that they were suggesting. And we were able to get some of those accomplished. And, it did end up passing, and that was um, several years ago. So in the end, it, it did turn out to be a positive, but, you know, we... But living to, through it to, forward, it didn't feel so yeah, good. I, I, yeah, I didn't know if you can <laughs> fail three times at debt exclusion and then, you know, because it's, you know, some residents were yep. feeling as though that we weren't listening to, um, which, which in the end, you know, I think we were able to listen to the, the residents' concerns and, and you know, um, make it a success, so... This is more of just a, I don't know if I'm even, I'll ask it anyways. Do you guys have marijuana in your We town? do. We went through <laughs> um, a bylaw change. Um, uh, it was probably beginning in, I want to say 2015 was the very initial steps. Um, and I thought uh, it was it was a very new process. Um, and it was very confusing to the residents, very confusing to the, you know, <laughs> boards and committees. Um, 
you know, and we're similarly and and and, right. and my you know my <laughs> understanding, which seems almost um, you know the opposite, would be um, you know adopting, being proactive to adopt the appropriate bylaws, so you can kind of mold what you know what the marijuana facilities you know will be. With, you know, I think there's at least our th going through the process. There was retail. There was you know manufacturing, and then there I think was wholesale um, and so trying to identify you know what's best for the particular community what was best for Shirley um, and so we were able to kind of go through that bylaw process um, it was difficult and but I think we found the right bylaws for the town of Shirley and um, we did have several immediately um, we had several um, you and you enter into host agreement so I was the um, chairman of the select board at the time so I um, in the initial process and it was very similar to this process we had you know multiple submissions um, we narrowed it down to kind of three finalists um, and then we went forward with one where we ended up signing a host committee um, a host um, host agreement um, we uh, created um, kind of a, a marijuana subcommittee um, to follow that that process. Um, they have been in operation for a little over a year. Um, we're we're just beginning to kind of see some of that revenue. Um, and I think we followed the process. We look, you know, it it was a very public process, obviously, as as local government is, um, and the residents had an opportunity to to you know to vote and and kind of help give us an idea and craft what was best for the town of Shirley and and it seems to be um, you know working it's been up and running for a year now so, so you've been through the cycle of it basically yeah. recently yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay can I ask my non-traditional question last or do you have one Tom um, I have a question but it's all um, uh, thinking about it, it's like the, the skill set required for this position, or, or the, the position requires a couple different skill areas, or can be served by it. Uh, as an example, um, legal, understanding mastering mm -hmm. the law and how it controls how the town government operates. Mm -hmm. Financial, the management of money, the accounting, and being able to work with independent professionals. Uh, personnel. And so, um, I would say, how do you see yourself... Uh, how, where do you see your where do you see yourself being strongest on those three I'll say three legs of the stool and is there a fourth leg to the stool that I didn't mention that you think we should be considering when we think evaluate the candidates? Yeah, so I mean, um, as I said, I, I and touched on a little bit pre uh, previously. I think my financial background, you know, is probably the strongest on on those. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, you know personnel. Um, I've had the opportunity to um, so with working with, in a restaurant. Well, and, and you know, it's it's a, a larger restaurant. Um, you know, where <clears throat> our, our revenue is you know five million. It's on any given payroll, we have eighty five employees, um, and you know, so I was the person that was in charge of hiring, firing, um, you know, disciplining, uh, th you know, things of that nature, um, and it's every aspect that you could imagine. I mean, we're talking teenage, you know, Different bussers and dish, dishwashers to the executive chef. Um, you know, you, you go on the town side. Um, I think there's, um, and perhaps, and I, and I know you that had mentioned kind of the legal aspect of this job, which, um, you know, I, I, I can talk to in, in a moment. Um, you know, but I feel like, um, you know, something that was that was newer to me, as I hadn't experienced until I was in local government, was um, you know the union aspect. Um, I, and you know, I thought you know, so we have several different unions within the town, um, and working through those negotiations. And I I learned because I was very concerned about that. Is well, I'm not a lawyer. How would I, you know, how would I know how this how to work through a union you know contract? And I think. Um, knowing that you have the, you know, you can utilize town council, knowing that you can depend on um, your department heads. You know, I'm, I'm looking with, you know, working with the, um, you know, so we just went through our, for this um, annual town meeting, we have our DPW um, 
union. Uh, previous to that, we had done both fire, clerical, and police, and and utilizing the you know the department heads. Um, you know, another aspect of legal would be, um, of course, you're you know you're going to work with your town clerk to make sure that you've got your warrants posted, that your minutes are, you know, that your meetings are posted properly, etc. Um, you know, but procurement. Um, you know, I, I think part of, um, you know, this process would be uh, when realizing I wanted to make a transition to town administrator, I think part of that process would, you know, be to get a procurement um, certification. That would be one of my goals personally, um, you know, just because that's another legal aspect, um, you know, to, to being a town administrator. So. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's one of those, like, kind of, once it becomes your professional that's yeah. profession, that's one of those like minimum bar things. Like yeah. you, you become the chief procure, or you tend to be the chief procurement officer for the yeah. community. So, uh, at least in small communities. Yeah, right? exactly. So, um, I'm going to ask you my non-traditional question. I just picked this one up from a, a different panel interview. Right. Zombie apocalypse hits on your drive home. Tell me your plan. I had one of those. <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. It wasn't a zombie apocalypse, though, but it was something similar. Zombie apocalypse. Zombie apocalypse hits on your drive home tonight. What's your plan? Well, i um, going to try and do everything I can to survive. <laughs> Assess the situation, I guess. Um, you know, try and figure out, um, are the roadways still safe? Um, you know, if so, um, do I have enough uh, fuel to get home? Is how long is it going to take? Um, you know, what am I going to do for the evening if uh, if it's going to take a couple days to get home? Um, you know, what are the basic essentials? You know, food, water, etc. How do I keep in communication with my family, with um, you know, people that would be wondering where I am? Uh, so really assessing the situation and trying to work through it um, as best you can, and and trying to communicate. Um, you know, with those that are depending on me, um, you know, the progress that I'm making and how I plan on getting through the zombie apocalypse. So. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, how would you rate yourself with technology? Um, I would say fair. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I by no means um, am the most technical, uh, but, you know, I. I'm fairly technical, um, mm -hmm. but I feel as though you need to be resourceful of, um, you know, as the general manager of the restaurant, um, you know, that does the banking, the financing, um, you know, if an oven goes out, a piece of, you know, if a pilot goes out in an oven, you know, the chef calls me and says the pilot light went out. And, you know, you can, to an extent, familiarize yourself with the equipment you know, but then you realize this is not something that we, you know, we can fix in house. And so you have to familiar, familiarize yourself with, you know, um, what technician do I need to call? When are they going to be available? Um, you know, things of that nature. And so I think, um, you know, my, it would be the same approach with technology of, you know, do I think that it's, it should be reasonable that, you know, if need be, you set up, you know, a camera, um, you know, or a microphone. Um, but as far as, you know, do I find myself uh, <laughs> being able to wire, uh, you know, a, a conference room? No, that's, but, but I, I'm sure we could figure out, you know, uh, how to procure the appropriate people, you know, to do so. Um, what uh, what accounting system does uh, Shirley use? I, here we use Vadar. Do you use that? That's, also? We do use Vadar. Okay. Um, are you familiar with it? How, how familiar uh, are you with it? I was a question ask. In my position currently, I'm familiar of how to read the reports, mm -hmm. um, and you know how to ask for you know the reports that I that I need. I, I don't have any technical use on it. Um, you know, I, I do think if I was in a more operational, you know, standpoint, um, you know, I, I think really that's the main function of the town accountant, but to be aware of, 
of basics. Um, you know, it's, you know, I definitely think that's part of a job, I think. So um, if I were to look at my position as the general manager, um, you know, I don't, my aunt and uncle own the business. Um, I would see them as kind of the executive level, the select board level, um, and myself as the general manager. You know, in town, I, I see that equivalent kind of as the town administrator. Um, I don't know how to make the sauces at the restaurant. I, you know, I, I know basics of cooking, but I, I'm not a, um, you know, seasoned, you know, chef. Um, but, you know, I, I feel as though that, it, you know, you can work with, you know, whether it be the department heads or the town accountant or what have you to, to definitely have a basic understanding and knowledge um, of, of, God forbid, if something happened and, and you know, you, were, you had a vacancy with the town accountant, um, you know, that things don't completely cease, um, that you'd be able to work through, um, you know, certain vacancies or, or issues that arise, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would say the, the important thing is to be, it's like for, for that position would be to be able to pull information out and not so much be manipulating it. Correct, yeah. And hopefully we don't have to make it to the account. I like our accountant. <laughs> nice. Well, that's always key. But she's a. Uh, she's outsourced. But, but she's, yeah. she's she's outsourced, and so if she became unavailable, the, uh, the, the her company would provide a, a, another one. Hopefully, hopefully as good. Do you, um, so we've used Clifton Larson Allen in the past to to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of the same thing outsource. So um, you know, we found that. Um, you know. We, uh, we are found so much that healthier. Effective. We are so much healthier for using an outsourced account Correct. than yeah. we were when we had an I, I just feel like accountant. yeah. I, I feel so. similar. Mm -hmm. How are we doing for time? Um, yeah. I was just going to ask. We are we we've got a little under fifteen minutes left. I was going to say it's time for him to get to ask his question. I was going to ask if it's that time. Yeah. It's like um, Jeff, you're raising your hand. What are you trying to? Uh, is, is the public allowed to ask questions? I don't we, don't have, we don't have public comment or question on the on the agenda. The agenda, sorry. So, um, what can we tell you about Brookfield and the town administrator position here that you would like to know? So, um, you know, just um, kind of what I had said is, you know, part of the initial process. If I were, you know, town administrator, is I would ask, you know, the department heads of staff, you know, kind of what are your um, you know, what do you see as, you know, upcoming either challenges or, um, you know, what, what, what is important to you as far as, you know, in the near future, um, you know, as far as Brookfield. So I, I didn't know if, just to get I a mean, better I sense. I think I kind of hinted at what I, what is, marijuana is new to the town. Mm -hmm. So it's, understanding how to navigate that and educate residents mm -hmm. on the process of going through it. Um, the other kind of things are, you know, blighted properties, for instance, in town, how to address that, and uh, just infrastructure in general, economic development. Yeah. I, it's very, it sounds so similar to Charles. Similar, yeah. We went through um, um, a minute, we, you know, a minimum maintenance bylaw. Um, you know, in the town of Shirley, which, you know, you had to navigate, um, you know, uh, you know, you had to navigate it appropriately just because, you know, people definitely don't want, you know, their, with their property being told, you know, you know, specifically what to do. Um, and that's understandable. Um, and, you know, economic development, that's, you know, and having that balance of maintaining, you know, your rural aspect, um, that's always, um, you know, something that we've been going through and, so, um, you know, I, I do, that was one of the main reasons that I, when I saw Brookfield become available, um, you know, that was, you know, one of the main reasons that I applied, just because I, I see a lot of similarities with the town of Shirley, so. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also, I guess, was wondering, um, you know, kind of what the timing you know, in processes as, as far as I, you know, I, I think obviously there are two other um, candidates that you're going through um, an interview with this evening. Um, you know, when you plan on making a decision and I guess once the decision is made, what um, kind
kind of what's your timeline expectations as far so we as we haven't formally even discussed that. So we yeah, we haven't ASAP, formally discussed that. Um, part of it's, if, it's if I was going to if I was, if I was gonna, we can we can discuss it now, <laughs> right? So we're we're doing three interviews tonight. I doubt that we're going to I doubt that we're going to like convene at the end of the third interview at 9:30 tonight and make a decision because that's never a good time to make a yeah. decision. So um, I suspect we'll put it on an agenda for next week sometime because we have a couple of meetings where we're getting together anyway. Um, and then, um, I, you know, we would expect that a person would need to give reasonable notice. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the start date would be negotiated based on their obligations to their current employer. So okay. if it's somebody that's currently with a town, a lot of people who are with towns have a 30-day notice requirement. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what your notice requirement would be with your business, but uh, uh, I want to stay in good graces yeah. with young uncle. Yeah. No, I, I mean I have been working out a, a transition. It was, uh, you know, kind of, you know, unique. This is, um, you know, which, which is, um, you know, over the last several weeks. Um, well, it's it's been a, a closer to a two month transition. Um, but the last couple of weeks, you know, I, I haven't been. Um, I've been more on the financial side and, and things of that nature and not physically working the, you know, night and weekend shifts, um, which is a unique change. I mean, I, I would have made this work otherwise, but, um, you know, Friday nights are, you know, for the last 15 years, I can tell you exactly where I was because I was working at the restaurant. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I have been working through transition. Um, and so that's, I, I feel as though I'd, I'm, you know, fairly more available. But once again, if, if it came to that, um, you know, through your decision-making process, I'm sure that'd be something we'd negotiate, so. I mean, I would say that we are, just, just looking at the calendar, I would say we would probably have the warrant book and be mostly lined up for town meeting before a, 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 what a candidate could start. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, it's like, and once that happens, the next big, the, the next big thing would be Getting finish closing up the year and towards the end of June and getting things closed out in July, so I would say we would probably be looking to have someone in here no later than mid June, and if they're available earlier, then that's not a bad thing. If it takes us until mid June, then you no. and I are going to fight. No, 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 no I'm more saying that the, the successful. The, the, I, I'm, just, I'm, just, no, I'm just letting you know. No, the preferred candidate may not be available until then. It's, yes. it's possible, oh, oh, I, I, but if, yes, if that's I not agree. driven, it better not be our reason. It better oh. not be us. <laughs> oh, oh, trust me, that's it's not going to be because we're slow. Uh, okay. I have, oh, I have, all right. I, 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 we're, we're violently agreeing here. Okay, just checking. <laughs> Speaking of violently agreeing, so we have five minutes before the next candidate is due. Mm -hmm. So, tell me about the last time some idiot got in your face and how you handled it. Um. Well, so, um, you know, I feel like I've been fortunate enough where, um, you know, I don't know that people have, you know, really gotten um, into my face, but people have been heated. Um, well, yeah, I mean, and, you work and, at a, you're a restaurant general manager. Right, yeah. I can't imagine. Oh, well, I, I, oh, I, cannot, I cannot imagine that, that you have that's, not, you that's have not fairly in, that, more, in that role. So some, some, we are more of, um, you know, kind of a, um, you know, either – whether it's a family or more of a, a you know, a, a not fine dining, but, you know, finer dining establishment. Um, so we're, we're fortunate with that, but also a lot of what we do is entertainment. Um, and, um, you know, some of the enter entertainment, um, you know, you have people that aren't there, especially, you know, although dining is available in our concert venue, um, you know, so our concert venue is 300 people. And we have all sorts of genres, you know, everything from... Uh, you know, blues to, you know, to rock, to country and folk. And, and so, you know, I've had experiences, um, you know, where you've had to shut people off, you know. Um, and, you know, for that, you know, you don't rely directly. You know, you, you rely on your human nature and, you know, try and be reasonable and calm. You know, but you're also relying on your TIP certification, etc. cetera. Um, I feel like on the town side... Um, you know, I feel like especially when you have, um, there'll be scenarios that come up, um, you know, where residents will be passionate about it or they'll be, um, you know, concerned. Most most of the time residents' concerns are, you know, are, are 
are definitely legitimate. Um, every once in a while, um, I've had uh, an experience where they they seem to be kind of, um, you know, a little bit more upset than than necessary. But that that's extremely rare, and I think dealing with it in a calm manner, et cetera. Um, I wasn't there personally, but this past week I know there was um, a scenario where there was a, a person that was upset where they felt as though they were wrongly charged, um, you know, for non-payment of, of their um, taxes. Um, and, you know, they seem worked up, but I, I felt as though the staff and the town administrator um, from all reports handled it very reasonably, very calmly. Um, and we're able to de-escalate the situation. So, um, you know, I think that's part of the job. Um, and, and I've had experience, but I've been, I have been fortunate where it's not been, you know, anything really outrageous, so. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I, I've got one more question. Um, sure. With your experience both in the private sector with the restaurant and in town government, uh, could you highlight for me some areas where you think um, can't, managing and running things in town government is different than in a private business where where do you see differences well there's definitely you know um leg legality issue in the sense of you know there's um you know there's a, a process a, pu a public process that you have to um follow um you know with municipal government um as far as you know to basically have um you know you know, to have a select board meeting, you have to post it, you know, things of that nature. There um, are procurement laws um, as far as in the private sector. Um, you know, if I want to hire an electrician, I can hire any electrician I want. If I want to meet, you know, with my management or I want to meet with, you know, the owners, um, you know, we can have a phone call, you know, at any time that I want to pick up the phone or we can meet. Um, so I think, um, you know, those would be the main differences. I think you'd see a lot of similarities. Um, I think, as I had said before, um, I view very much um, being a general manager as a, as a town administrator. Um, there are certain things that, you know, you have to get done each week, each month, each quarter, um, you know, in the restaurant side, whether it's, um, you know, making sure that payroll's complete, making sure that you have your you know, taxes filed, et cetera, um, that you have your, your, you know, your, your banking secure, um, or something as simpler as, as, as making sure that um, the new features are updated on your point of sale system. Um, but at the same time, there's certain things that come up. You have an employee that calls out that, you know, uh, an employee that needs to be addressed for, for whatever reason, you know, um, the, uh, the fry later, you know, has an issue and you need to have that fixed or the dish, you know, the dish machine. Mm -hmm. I foresee that very similar as town. You know, you have to make sure that you have, um, you know, your, your recap, you know, completed. You need to make sure that, um, you know, you have your town meetings posted, that you have your, you know, warrants um, properly posted and, and all of that. But at the same time, something's going to happen. You're going to have a vacancy. You're going to have... Um, something comes up with an employee, you're going to have to have disciplinary, disciplinary action. Um, you know, a culvert may have, uh, a, you know, an issue. <laughs> and so I think that, you know, it would translate well into that. Um, so. Thank you. Any last questions for us? I don't think so. Okay. But uh, I very much appreciate, you know, you having me, and I look forward to hearing from you. Um, and I thank you for your time. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, very nice to meet you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Have a safe drive home. Is there another? Is the other one out there? Yes. Yep. Okay. Please do. Are you doing okay, Jeff? I'm just getting old. <laughs> You'll be both, brother. Yeah. It's so a, I, I, it's I, I, although I do yoga about support. two or three times a week, yeah. so I can still move. Yeah. Yeah, and those chairs are not built for somebody in your frame. <laughs> Yeah.
<laughs> yes, the one that with is the microphone. Hot seat. How are you? Good. All right. I'm Tom. Hi, Tom. Brian Moriarty. Nice to meet you. Hi, Brad. Hi, Brad. Brian nice. Moriarty. Nice to meet you. Beth Coughlin. Hi, Beth. Nice to meet you. Oh, the microphone, right? Yes. <laughs> We're, we're used to being here, so you know, it's like this, that's the guest seat. I, oh, good. I get it. Not a problem. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. Yes, and this is, this is open meeting, and we are recording. Okay. Just, as, just so you're not surprised. By okay, that. thank you. <laughs> Hello, Brookfield. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Uh, and just as uh, introductions, uh, I am the chair of the committee. Okay. And Brad is the vice chair, and Beth is the clerk Got it. at the moment. Thank you. Um, She's the most tenured. <laughs> yes, Brad and I have been on the board for a year and a half. That has been on. I'm the one of most questionable. <laughs> uh, have you have you been here nine years now? You've been on nine years? No, or this six? is my second term. Second. Oh, you, is, you, is it my you, second this term is, or my you, third? No, third. Because you 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 ran against Comtois, then you ran against Tony, and now you and then this one. Or did you have two elections before Tony? Oh. Tony ran against you three years ago. I remember. That's I remember right. That. He did. Okay. So yeah, this is my. Yeah. So this is my the second the first third year term? first year of my third term. Okay. So is where we're at. Three wow, terms. I lost track. Okay. <laughs> and then I did the finance or the advisory committee for I think five or six years before that because mm -hmm. I ran unsuccessfully two other times before that. Mm -hmm. So lots of involvement. Yes. Right? yes. That's, oh that's yeah. Good. So it's good. Yes, I so uh, Brian, tell us about yourself. Uh, okay. Uh, well, my name is Brian Moriarty. I live in Hatfield, mm -hmm. Mass. Uh, which is about 55 miles away, 50 miles away, I guess. Is that North south of Deerfield. Yes, no, exactly. Say, yeah. yeah. Watley's nearby. Is it? Yes, is, correctly. Did I say that right? No. <laughs> but no, you brought it up. I wasn't going to no, correct no, you. No, I'm no, here no, for an no, interview, no, right? I, I mean, I, I think it's it is Waitley. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. That's kind of like Peabody. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or Leicester, but you know. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, I, I'm here this evening, obviously, to um, speak to you about the town administrator position. So I, I'm from Hatfield. I'm from Hoyoke, actually, but we've lived in Hatfield for 25 years. So we're still newcomers, by the way, um, uh, in that small community. And it, it's very similar in size, <coughs> population, finances, as Brookfield is. So when I saw the advertisement, I thought it would, might be a good fit. I am a former 15-year school committee member in Hatfield. Mm -hmm. I am a former nine-year select board member in Hatfield. I chose not to run for re-election last, last May. So I had three consecutive terms on the board, of, on the board of selectmen. <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> so that was a that was a good decision I made uh, just to, you know, kind of step back and let, kind of let the next generation come in. But at the same time, um, uh, the company I was working for, which was a uh, international telecommunications company, had a worldwide RIF reduction in force. Mm -hmm. So um, we've been spent, so I was laid off, and my wife and I have been spending a lot of time visiting our now 18-month-old granddaughter mm -hmm. who lives in Wayland. Um, so we've been going back and forth for a few days at a time. Uh, my background in both, I worked at Verizon and then Ericsson Communications, that is in my resume, uh, where I was a implementation slash project manager. Mm -hmm. So I oversaw um, large complex projects. With Verizon it was more in the 413 local area, New York maybe. Um, for Ericsson Communications, they deal with cellular companies. So uh, that was nationwide. Um, Ericsson provides the equipment and the software for the majority of uh, cellular companies, mm -hmm. uh, especially the, the big, the large ones. So 5G was the big push. 5G got mm -hmm. completed, and then the you know the work kind of slowed down. So um, I thought that with my background in both uh, the private and the public sector. Uh, town administrator position would kind of be right up my alley, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, so here I am. I mean, I could, I could go on and on, but I don't want to bore you with any detail. But I mean, that's kind of the the crux, the local, or the most recent type of uh, information. Mm -hmm. okay. I didn't know if you had any specifics or. 
at this point, as many as far as the background goes. I think, that, I think that was a good introduction. Okay. And I'm sure additional questions will come up. Absolutely. Uh, we'll have follow-up questions around things as we ask you questions, or and then there'll be a chance for you to ask us questions. Sure. Also. Sounds great. Right. Thank you. All right. So I will. Uh, I'll start. Okay. Is that, um, in in your experience, um, how do you? It's like uh, I'll, I'll ask the question the same way I asked it last time. Um, in the role, I, I see the role having a requirement of several different, I'll say, major skill areas, legal, financial, and personnel. Mm -hmm. And how do, you, uh, how, do you, how do you rate your strength in each of those? Um, and do you, are there any other legs under that stool that you think we should be aware of? Okay. So, I'm role. sorry. I didn't mean. No, yeah, I just, yeah. I just, I just, All right. I just, so, um, well, so my my background, both politically and in the private sector, um, through the years being an implementation project manager, uh, has been to um, certainly deal with the public, the public on, on the on the uh, selectment side or or the customer, however we want to. So constituents and customers. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is not, that's, I would say that is certainly one of my strengths, the, my interpersonal skills. Um, when it came to being a select board member dealing with the public, I always listened, um, heard the, the praise or the complaint, uh, and then did some research if, if there was something a, a constituent had an issue with. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was always timely in getting back to them. So I, I guess I'm, I guess I would say that from an interactive perspective with, with the town's people and, and the boards, by the way, and department heads, you know, with everybody, uh, I would be very comfortable in having conversations. And whatever the topic was, I'd be very comfortable, if I didn't know the answer, in researching that for them. Uh, from a legal was one of the questions you asked. From a, legal is one of the uh, legs under the stool. Yes, so. okay. So, I, I mean, from a legal perspective, if it's talking about HR policies and ethics, and, and I don't know if that is what it means, from, from your perspective, uh, I'm very familiar with the laws mm -hmm. and very familiar with how to treat people, um, whether it has to do with a particular law or not, just how to treat people uh, fairly. And, uh, you know, if there would be something that would come up of a legal perspective that I needed to research, I, I would do that as well. Or if it was something, I mean, truly a big deal, reach out to town council and, and, and find out what the answer may be. Yes. And the other leg of the stool? Sorry. Uh, the other two were financial and okay. personnel. Financial. Uh, right. So like, like managing employees. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. So um, I would say the financial aspect of it, being on the board, we always, dealt, we always worked with the town, town administrator, mm -hmm. um, of course. And we have a finance committee, mm -hmm. a five-member finance committee. And that was uh, how we would put the budgets together. Um, we've had some financial up and downs in the community through the years um, for different reasons. People passing away, people leaving their position, you know, there were some different things that happened at certain times, but we, we would come together, the Board of Selectmen, Finance Committee, whoever's role, whoever's responsibility the issue may have fallen under, um, to work with the state if we needed to. Um, and work with the town administrator, and again with legal if we needed to. Um, from an overall overview of the financial side, I'm, I'm very familiar with the various, um, you know, the free cashes and the tax levies and, and those types of things. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not sure yeah. how how deep, or if I'm answering your question. No, I, I, I think I think you're generally answering it. It's, okay. It's, I was a little concerned you weren't going to address it in the beginning. And then, but then you came to the legal side and the financial side and, and addressed those. Okay. Uh, and again, yeah, the legal side. I mean, I'm not an attorney. So, uh, but as far as as far as dealing with people, um, following HR policies, following everything, so that nothing comes back on the town and everything is fair with an employee, a colleague, a department head, a constituent. I'm very familiar with those policies. 
okay. and procedures. And then, and then what about on a, uh, I would say, personnel in a uh, super, in, in, in the supervisory context? Okay, so in, in a supervisory role, uh, the way Hatfield did it, I'm not sure how Brookfield does it, we had um, lia board of selectmen members were liaisons, one to each department, for, for example. Mm -hmm. I might have police and fire, somebody else would have the DPW, mm -hmm. somebody else would would have the uh, building inspector and we would rotate those every year so from a personnel perspective um, that gave us the opportunity not only about to uh, familiarize ourselves with that department and that department head but that also gave us an opportunity to review with them policies procedures job descriptions uh, etc for each of the roles for their particular um, employees mm -hmm. uh, I think that what I would probably like to do as a town administrator is be involved with uh, the development of personnel, I don't know if personnel files, right? Uh, job descriptions, mm -hmm. and then um, have, have feedback or, or have sessions, whether it's quarterly or every six months with the department head and maybe with an employee. Uh, it's like, where do you stand right now in, in your job? How, how are you doing? Do we need some remediation? Are you doing great? You know, rather than just yearly evaluations where you may have been able to correct an issue or give somebody credit prior to that, I think it's important to have feedback so everybody's on the same page going down the, down the road. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Next. Um, What's your experience in your town with intermunicipal agreements and what's your approach to regionalization? So with, with other local, with, with neighboring communities yeah. type thing, uh, we tried to do a lot of that. Um, it was a big push uh, with the schools back a while ago. We, we mm -hmm. still have an independent school system. Hatfield is the smallest independent school district in the state of Massachusetts. Has its own high school and has its own elementary school. Um, not without its challenges, but you know, in today's day and age. Uh, so we've entered into them. I haven't been the one that has signed on the dotted line. We would approve mm -hmm. MOUs, perhaps, mm -hmm. uh, memorandums of understanding, uh, with other organiz excuse me, with other communities to whether it was um, using equipment. It, it happened yeah, mostly with the right. DPW, but yeah. um, you know, th that town has a certain mower we need or a street sweeper or, or whatever. And so there mm -hmm. was that kind of, uh, those type of arrangements. Um, we entered into some MOUs, even um, post-contractual agreements. Uh, for example, somebody might have um, taken on another position where, a st rather than a stipend, it might have been a memorandum of understanding to, to change the salary base or something like that. Uh, we didn't have a ton with other communities, but we had some. So my involvement with that would have been at the selectman level approving and having conversations with the town administrator uh, or asking questions or fact-finding with the town administrator as far as that goes. Okay. Um, so, based on your experience mm -hmm. in town government as a select board member and then now looking to move into the town administrator role, mm -hmm. How do you see, like, what do you see as the interaction between select board, town administrator, finance team, department heads? Like, what's your vision of what that looks like in a community like Brookfield? Sure. So I, I would say first off, um, the town administrator, at least in Hatfield, and I think it's not so much just the person, but I think it's the position, is kind of the glue that holds everything together you know this the central point of contact most likely for all those different departments that you mentioned so certainly the town administrator works with and for the select board you know is there uh, directly I also think that they are the go-between for other departments that want to get information to the select board uh, or ask questions of the select board so they can be the intermediary for for things like that um, I think that as a town administrator, you wear many hats, depending on the day of the week and the time of the day, um, because you are interfacing with all the various departments. Uh, I can relay you know, experience from, from my own career, and I know our town administrator um, is very, 
is very busy, was very busy while I was on the board. I'm sure she still is. Um, but people relied on the town administrator to give them the information. They would then find the information, find the answers, or you know, find the find the answers to the questions they were asked, and then um, bring it back to that particular person or group um, department. Uh, and again, certainly the, the select board is a is a big part of who the town administrator supports and works with. Um, By the way, I'm sorry, excuse yeah. me. I was just going to say, if, if, if I'm going off topic, you know, if you need to pull me back in, feel um, free to say, well, how about this? Yeah. I mean, because it's, it's hard to know exactly what the yeah. re I response is. I don't know how to, but I'm really good at that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Beth has shown that she has no problem <laughs> doing that. Well, she thinks it's necessary. Excellent. Well, I, I just, you know, I, I want to make sure I'm answering the question the way you were, you, what you're hoping to hear or something along those lines yeah. at least you know yeah. okay. so one of the changes we're going through here in Brookfield is the legalization of marijuana it's now legal um, and we're working through our first HCA agreement mm -hmm. do you have any experience in the town of Hatfield we with do marijuana mm -hmm. and what is it and so um, we have experience with it in Hatfield mm -hmm. um, it was it was brought up at town meeting. Town meeting approved it um, mm -hmm. to allow it, if, if every, all the goals were met. Yeah. Um, we entered into, I think we're up to three right now. The planning board got heavily involved in that, by the way, mm -hmm. um, because depending on, so we're an agricultural community, if, if you're not familiar with that. So uh, a lot of our decisions were made to try to balance business and balance you know, open space so uh, because there's a ton of farmland. Agriculture. agriculture yeah, yeah, we have a lot of agriculture in Hatfield. Yeah. Um, uh, but so certain areas, but some of the farms back right up to homes. It, it, and uh, so depending on where the grower, potential grower might want to go, that planning board got involved and had all sorts of hearings and things like that. So, uh, most of them um, passed because they were legal, but if they didn't meet certain criteria, those didn't. To answer your question, we have had an experience. We have had no issues with the companies that are involved in cannabis. The most recent issue, or the issue we had before I got off the board and was just starting out, is the Mass Legislature changed the law. Right. And so we were expecting some financial benefit from having entered into a cannabis agreement with one of the businesses. Mm -hmm. um, but they were arguing that, well, wait a second, that agreement for the 3%, uh, the legislature did away with it. So we, uh, we were arguing, but you have a contract that you entered into this in good faith in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it stands right now, to be honest with you. Yeah. Oh, well, but when the law cha oh, they change it from a, they changed the stand from a standing amount to a, you have to prove impact before you get reimbursed. Correct. Mm -hmm. So initially it was viewed basically almost like a surcharge on whatever the cannabis organization right. would get. And now you have now. You've got to prove there really was an impact. That there, that, that there was an impact, and the only thing you can collect is the tax if the, you have retail. So if yeah. you have manufacturing or agricultural, which is all that's before us right now, it, you actually don't get have. a Correct. You, yeah. you, you don't actually get any. We don't have retail. retail. Unless, yeah, yeah. Unless, we, unless we can demonstrate that those operations are causing mm -hmm. some sort of harm. impact to the mm -hmm. town. Sort of the, yeah. The, so, yeah, so we, we're, we just signed our first social media agreement. Okay. So the, the businesses are just starting their licensing procedure with the state CCC. Mm -hmm. So you you have uh, blazed the trail ahead of us. <laughs> you know, I I understand. So I'm a little. Uh, I was disappointed that existing agreements couldn't be, and they probably could if the the town attorney and the cannabis attorney got together and figured something out. Because I understand where business like, well, if they change the law, I really don't need to pay you. But by the same token, that law originally is what allowed communities or encouraged communities to open, to, to open the doors, exactly. And because it was, um, it was a lengthy, con initially, a lengthy conversation to get into that business. Mm -hmm. um, but, but they did because the promise was, we thought, well, we're gonna get 3% of you know the, their profits or three, you know three percent of the business and then 
by the time this particular business got up and running, there were delays, delays getting a license, not from the town, but from the state. state. Everything was delayed. And by the time it all played out, the, the new law was changed. We're like, come on, man. <laughs> so, so we've had no problems. They, they all, and I, w I would suggest, I know nothing about the business that's coming to Brookfield. I'm guessing um, since it's out it, it, throughout the state, I would imagine that they really know what they are doing and have the proper direction from le you know, legally and from the state, from the Cannabis Commission, et cetera. Um, you know, you just you, you lay out the guidelines and everyone has to follow what they're supposed to do. Um, but I don't know as far as um, I have no idea what the contract says uh, or the agreement revenue wise. Um, ultimately for Brookfield or any, or anywhere else right for that now matter we're just looking it's yeah. a one agriculture gotcha yep the manufacturing yeah. coming yep. down and then, and then on our warrant on our warrant we're going to institute we're going to be the only community that's going going a half measure on the tax and we're only going to tax it one and a half percent once we have retail in the hopes that maybe it'll at least get us a shop <laughs> yeah right yeah good that took that's actually a good idea you know three percent was kind of uh yeah, percentage and, and rate that everybody was everybody's using. Everybody's either zero or three percent right. right now. So we, if we adopt it at town meeting, we'll be the, one of the first communities to have something in the middle. Yeah. Um, yeah good. So well, there's a cost of doing business. I, right. I mean, and you know. Exactly. Yeah. So. Good. I, I wish well, you luck. Surrounding towns have it at three percent, and you go to one and a half, maybe. <laughs> That's business, man. <laughs> I'm with you. So, anywho. The big buyers will come to Brookfield. Yeah, yeah right. The yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, but anywho. Um, so, let's see here. I, I try to ask the same questions. Now, I know it, it, looking at your resume, and it, it doesn't look like, other than your time as a select board member, that you've really been in like a direct supervisory or management position. But... I'm sure you've seen a lot in your professional career. So I know you've probably worked in teams that have had turnover. So tell me the difference between good turnover and bad turnover. Okay, so, um, and I did uh, let this, I believe I let the search committee know this um, during our meeting, but while I didn't have direct reporting people to me, as a manager, we worked with multiple unions and um, employee non-union employees to get the work done. Mm -hmm. So I had I would I would say they were dotted line mm -hmm. employees. Did I do their yearly reviews? No. Was I involved with their manager saying so? You know, how's Brian doing? with all that work you're doing out in Philadelphia, you know, a technician doing mm -hmm. great, customer loves him, you know, he's doing great, and, you know, no, no problem, keeps me informed so I can tell the customer what's going on. Um, and we also had the experience where there were some that we were getting negative, I was getting negative feedback. I was dealing with the customer mm -hmm. and then dealing with these departments who had the technicians that were doing. And occasionally you get, you know, we all have a bad day. But occasionally you'd, you'd hear a couple different times maybe about a particular issue, situation, personality, wh whatever. And I would deal with the manager of that particular employee. Um, and then they would, it would, ball was in their court. You know, we, I, one time I had a customer say, don't ever send, send that person out here again. Or I'm like ripping up the contract type thing. You know, so some conversations were stronger than others that I would have with employees, um, with the managers of, of the employees. Good turnover versus bad turnover. I think, uh, I like to think of it as good turnover is probably a person that worked for you or in your department might have another opportunity for growth, career growth, personal growth, and that's why they're leaving. I think negative turnover is probably uh, if you see, I mean, somebody just might not like the job and they're, they're done. Uh, if you see, conversely, if you see that person or people leaving, 
then maybe there's another issue that that's why they're leaving. So I would say the first thing I would do is probably, you know, you try to do exit interviews anyways to find out what people are leaving. You know, look in the mirror. Am I not managing these people or this department the way I should? Could I do better? Or is it an external factor, you know, something I'm not aware of that these people are just, you know, not jiving with, and that's why they're leaving. So I, I, I think that there's two kinds. I think there's a positive, but I think there's a negative. And I think if it's a negative turnover, you need to find out, if you can, why. And then correct, if, if it's something that you can, you correct the issue. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Oh, when I asked that one the last time, I did two questions. Okay. Above. So if you don't mind, I'm going to ask course my, not. my other question. So I'm ask three if you want. There you go. <laughs> Most interviews, people say, what was your greatest success, right? They Everybody's sure do. That story, right? Yeah. I got one ready for you. If you go that route, go for okay, it. Okay, but I'm going to, because I'm a... I'm a What's I'm your a, worst success or last worst failure, I should say? Glorious, not worst success, what was, right? What was your that didn't come failure. out right. Tell me about your most glorious failure. <laughs> That you're willing uh, to share in public. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know that I have. I've far from perfect. Glorious failure. Um, you know, I think oftentimes, as a select board member, at least I did. You guys probably do too. Sometimes you just know you've got the right idea. You 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 got all the information. Everybody in town's going to love the idea. You're not even going to have to try to sway them to go with you. And you bring it forward, you know, and they're like booing at you at town meeting or something. It's like, wow, didn't see that coming. Um, you know, that happened on a, a couple of different things. Um, the good news was it wasn't just me. It was the select board, you know. But yeah, we went in there as a, we're going to go get them. And uh, it just didn't pass. It, you have to know your audience, right? Um, so I, you know, there's, there's been times that there's been issues, but we bounce back. Uh, we redo, a, the, in those instances, we found out why they were such a negative response from the public. Uh, you know, we are a farming community, uh, and we are between the communities of Amherst and Northampton. Mm -hmm. um, great communities, um, but there's a different mindset in Hatfield of, life and things like that older community actually um, a lot of farms and homes have been handed down through generations so it's, it's different it's not a college town you know you know where i'm going i think um and so sometimes things would get brought forth that were maybe not the right thing for people didn't think it was the right thing for hatfield um, i can give you one example uh, and it ultimately worked out but we were uh, being asked to provide a bike path from Northampton for like to Amherst. <laughs> 300 yards of Hatfield property that was next to a railroad track. And the misconception I feel was that the many in the community just figured it was opening up the floodgates to people to come to Hatfield I don't know what they were thinking, like to hang out or something, <laughs> you know, and, and we were trying to say, listen, this is to have people just drive on through on their way to Northampton, Hadley, Hatfield. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it, it, we just didn't, I don't think we did a good job up front explaining what this was all about. I think people thought people were going to get off their bikes and just start camping under trees and doing whatever they wanted to do. So and it's not floodgates, the hot and tots. Because sometimes they do in Northampton. Mm -hmm. Uh, you said that, not me. Well, it's, it's just a different community. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's nothing, and you know, it, you know, we all live where we live for the reason we live there. Um, and, and Northampton's a great community. This wasn't a knock on them. This was, uh, but it's just a different mentality in certain things, social, social aspects oftentimes. And so we ultimately won them over the following year at, a, at the next town meeting after having open public sessions so people could come and ask all the questions rather than spend three hours of a town meeting on one question about a bike path. Mm -hmm. 
you know, when you're trying to approve a ten million dollar budget on other did, on so, other things. So you contracted the farmer who was adjacent to the bike path <laughs> to put his bull in the field along that path, so no one would get off the bikes. Correct, and <laughs> we we already put up all the no parking signs, so you you're not coming on a car. I, I mean, we we did it all, you know. <laughs> It took a little longer than we anticipated. It's being paid for by a different organization. We had no skin in the game except 300 yards along a railroad track. Yeah. And it worked out. So I hope Hatfield doesn't read, because I'll never get reelected if I decide to run for selectman again. But. So I would say, I don't know if that answered your question or not, it, it but did. it's okay. It did. Thank you. You're welcome. So I want you to ask your technology question to this guy. How do you rate yourself with technology? <laughs> the technology of... Uh, Just dealing with technology, being able to deal with reports and spreadsheets. And, oh, I, um, I would say a strong B. Yeah. I, and I, I'll, yeah, I'd say a strong B. I mean, cer and, certain parts, well, you know, everybody says the Microsoft suite. Yeah, right. right. And okay. more or less project management. Yes, yeah. right. So uh, I'm fine sending out reports. I'm fine doing reports, doing spreadsheets. Um, mm -hmm. Email, of course, uh, you know, Word, documents, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Mm -hmm. Do yeah. you want me to drill down? I mean, well, hey, more into the being able to project manage the role itself of the town administrator and managing the tasks going forward via technology or just yeah. in general? Yeah, I mean, U utilizing technology. Oh, you well, so I, I guess. Technology, so I would say there's a couple different things. So there's the project managing part of technology. Mm -hmm. um, when you're talking about the spreadsheets and sending them out and who needs to use them and manipulating them and that mm -hmm. type of thing, that's fine. I'm, I'm comfortable doing that. I think there's the technology where we uh, use social media to try to stay as a transparent board and town administrator and government uh, using social media technology, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, whether it's anything else, our, our own app, technology mm -hmm. for, for the townspeople to be able to come in and access us, uh, access information, uh, and reach me or mm -hmm. whoever's sitting in this seat. Um, you know, there's, I noticed, I, I think I saw actually that you guys have a new app that you use for communicating outward. Did, was that fairly new? Yeah. But it's yeah. only for iPhones, right? Uh, I saw. I, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm a. I'm a. No, I don't believe. I'm an Android user. I don't believe it's just for iPhones, and it's been a challenge. Um, we do have it. It's a free thing. Yeah. Um, part of the challenge is we don't really have participation from department heads to utilize, or not that they're not wanting to use it. It's just an afterthought. Sure. Yeah. It. We had a system called Code Red. Yeah. Um, same heard, same, same thing. It, it basically said blasts things. out uh, emails yeah. and texts or, yeah. or a voice, you know, a canned mm -hmm. West Street will be closed tomorrow from mm -hmm. 8 to 5, you know. Yeah. Um, but we, we try not to overuse it. Yeah. And, and it can be um, positioned in the sense that for you don't have to send it to everybody in town if you know you're only affecting a particular section, so, which I would consider being part of the technology yeah. that we we could use. Yeah, I'd say communication um, in this yep. town is very lacking. We, we don't do a yeah. good job. Good job. You, you, should, you should see, a, uh, enlist Lindsay to use it for highway announcements. Like, oh, she's aware of it. Oh, she's aware? Okay, well, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not signed up for it, so I don't get anything. It's that completely yeah. It can I come in handy. More of it, actually, now that you say it, I should go back down there, because I think I rolled it more with Brian than mm -hmm. with her. <laughs> it can come in handy, especially if there's an, a true emergency. I mean, it's called yeah. Code Red, but... Um, but it's not free. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it was free. This for, is free. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I read that when I was yeah. looking at it on, yeah. on your uh, website. Um, but it's very good. We have a lot of. You do too, probably. We have a lot of old pipes under the ground, and when the weather changes, uh, some of those pipes burst, and so they're great when you have to say there is a water main break on Route Five. Um, it's closed. You know, it's already blocked off, you know, so we, it, it's good for an emergency type thing like that, as well as the heads up, hey, don't forget there's a town meeting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, type thing. So, because we, we, we get like smooth, dulcet, yeah, we have a robocall. Oh, excellent. That, well, you know, the most utilized, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and you've got to, we've got to be up on technology because, uh, and I'm guilty of it myself, I don't get a newspaper anymore. 
So technology, online, everyone's got a cell phone, everyone's got a computer, so we, we need to allow access to our town information, which I know Brookfield does, mm -hmm. um, because I was looking at your website, it, and it, as did Hatfield, as does every community, but I mean, it's important. But you still need to be able to reach those people uh, in our community in particular who don't have a computer and don't have a cell phone. They still have a landline, I have one of those too, because uh, I still feel an allegiance to Verizon, um, because they need to be reached as well. You know, but, so we're always notifying um, of the various projects, and of course you have to do it legally anyways. I, for example, I saw you guys have a, you're opening bids next week, I think, for upstairs, the cable, yes. the 24th. Uh, yes, so, so, so the audio video. Yeah, well, my point being you still need to use written newspapers or newspapers so people can go online and read the newspaper um, for those types of instances. Did I answer your question? Yeah, <laughs> when all was said and done? <laughs> I, we're, we're talking about landlines and we started with technology. Is, land, is a landline even technology anymore? I don't know. It is. It's, it's a, it's a well-proven technology. Absolutely. That works when the power's out. That's why I still have mine. <laughs> I started in a landline telephone company. Oh, okay. College. Oh, all right. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Um, um, I'll go next. The uh, what do you see as the uh, as I would I would say the three main challenges uh, facing the uh, the person selected for the for the position. Well, I would say familiarity, or becoming familiar with the town and the businesses and the department and the player I mean you know getting to I don't know who the other candidates are but I mean it it certainly would be nice to have all the players and names um, probably I would I would say also um, communicating with the board communicating with the department heads of vis our vision the, the board's vision and the town administrator's vision to the various departments and how are we going to get there um, your budget looks pretty solid, it, at least I saw last year's budget, you know. Um, I like your stabilization fund. <laughs> Could do a lot with that. <laughs> kidding, kidding. Um, but to see that it was 7% roughly or almost 8%, at least last year, of yeah. your total budget, that, that's pretty good. We, we haven't been in that position um, in, in Hatfield. Um, yeah, even, even times when our finance financial house wasn't in order we we kept it tamped down to the point that once we did all the math we were health, still healthy so yeah it's important but I noticed you still had a pretty good amount in your uh, levy limit too we're a little close right now mm -hmm. you know we always but look close but I guess it's, I, I'm uh, so listen you playing chicken, we'll chicken we'll figure it out you, I, chicken I was just gonna say we levy limit. we've had ours uh, you know You've, you've got to live in the times you live in, you know. We have lots of projects, um, and, and uh, it, it's been much lower than that. It's been above it, you know, it's, it's been above zero or yeah. above five bucks, but yeah. not by much sometimes. Um, we, but anyways, back to the, the, I think, the three main things. So certainly meeting, figuring out the, the community, getting a feel for it, getting the vibe. Um, getting a feel and a vibe for all the, the players, the department heads, the employees. Um, and I would say probably what's important and, and being open to residents coming in and, and communicating to, you know, talk, speak with me. But I think also to sort of get a feel for where does Brookfield want to go? I mean, we're, we're going to become a cannabis community, right? And so w what else is, is there anything else sort of ready, ready to go? Are there any major projects? I, I mean, I guess that would still be part of that fact finding, but I, I think that would be um, probably the, the most important things right up front. Um, and to get out there and be seen as the new town administrator. Let people see you. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. In the interest of consistency, I'm going to ask you a non-standard interview question that okay. I picked up from a recent panel. I sat on at my day job. Okay. See how it goes. Yeah. Zombie apocalypse hits. 
on your drive home today? What's your plan? Well, I'll call my wife and let her know that uh, I'm having a problem getting home. Uh, zombie, uh, I, that is a non-standard question for sure. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter if it's truly an apocalypse, right? I mean, <laughs> you, you, you know, what can I do, right? Go open up a whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> is, well, that's, that's, where, where's that's that a legitimate answer. Where's that cannabis place, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know. Yeah. Yeah, are, are you going to be a stop at an electronics store with a baseball bat guy, or are you going to stop at the pot shop? <laughs> right? Might as well go out and just wait for it to happen. Yeah. I like it. Fair enough. Okay, gotcha. All right, so then my real question Yes. Is, last time you had an angry customer, angry technician, angry townsperson in your face, tell me about how you handled it. I let them vent. It, it would be a townsperson, to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah. Most of my job were remote. Um, telecom, okay, so, telecom. so you had angry phone calls. No Correct. Necessary. Oh, I, well, I had plenty of those, but act, actually an in-your-face in kind of person. Um, you know, we, we have certain uh, people in town who you can never do the right thing. As, we as, an, elect, we don't have as an elected official. I know. <laughs> I, I understand. <laughs> We're on camera. I get it. I, wink, wink. Um, I need yeah, to bring my mother. <laughs> you know, I, I think you need to let people vent, um, and I think you, you need to see if you can ask them or get them to calm down and say, and if they accost you out front or of, of the building or town hall or something, say, let's go into my office, you know, that gives them a minute or so to hopefully walk, you know me in front of them because I'm going to my office. Maybe during that walk, they can calm down just a little bit and then go into my office and shut the door and say, what can I do for you? And then you, and, you, know, you, you hear them out. And if you don't have the information, I think you gotta say, if it's something that you can just pull up and quickly say, that's not right, this is what it is, look, you can turn the computer screen or, you know, I don't have the answer right now. I, I, I've got to reach out to the DPW t to find out what that situation is. But I will get back to you this afternoon. I mean, it's, it's all about communication. Every question you've asked me so far, every question you're going to ask me, all is about communication. Whether it's internal communication, whether it's communication with the public, it's all about transparency. It's all, in my opinion, by the way, it's all about communication because I learned through the years in my phone company days that landline days things break right things break now but things broke then and all a customer really wanted was we understand things break and i'm the same way all i want is an update when it's going to be fixed that's all i want so communication is key so i'd say when do you want me to call you back and they'd say every four hours I'd say no problem Three and a half hours, I was on the phone call saying, still not fixed. Yeah, I know, because, <laughs> you know, I, I said, but we're, we got three of our best guys on it right now. We're close, man. No, no. It, depending on the customer, you'd say, we are working on it. The problem is a flooded manhole. I, yeah. You know, we got to dry out the cable. Yep. It's taking a little long. Okay. You know, I said, I'll call you, call you at three. Call them at seven. Call them at 11 at night, you know. And so one time, uh, one, one of the customers was call me every four hours. So I called him at seven at night. And then I called him at 11. And he said, what are you doing? I said, you said call you every four hours. Not at night. Don't call me at home. I said, well, you know, you got to be more specific. You said every four hours. <laughs> four hours is up. What time you want me to call you tomorrow morning? Eight. Okay. You know, but we, he, we needed to communicate. Yeah. We needed to know what the expectation was. And I, I, don't think it, I don't think that the public sector is a whole heck of a lot different than the private sector, depending on the position. And um, we used to say that to our DPW guys, who were most often the people in front of, out, out in the public. And we used to say, just, you know, if you're cutting down a tree and it falls on your foot, 
just say ouch don't say anything more than that and you know make the phone call report it relax take it easy you're the you're wearing the big shirt that says dpw on it you're driving the big truck that says dpw on it everyone knows who you are and if you do something or say something or act in a certain way and i'm not picking on the dpw by the way but no. they're the ones out there doing trucks and cutting tree um you know just be mindful of that so um i i think the the communication aspect of with you folks and with the uh, constituents is very important. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leverage that uh, your answer here and say, um, based on your experience as a uh, in elected office at the town government and in the private sector, um, what do you see as uh, some of, some of the big differences between? Um, op operating and um, uh, being a town administrator versus uh, being in a similar type project manager, or a similar slash project manager position in the private sector? I think that in the public sector, um, you're a lot more visible. Even if you, and I mean that because visible that people are gonna walk, can come in and see you, they can call you on the phone, they can call you guys and say, hey, Brian's not getting back to me. I, it's not, it's similar but different. I, I think you're just more in front of the public. You're more in front of your customer. You're more in front of your constituents when you're a town administrator or when you're a public official. Um, I mean, half the time, you know, my neighbors would tell me something that another department did, and then I'd have to go back to the town administrator. And I'd say, did you call? Did you call the department head? Small town, everybody knows who everybody is, by the way. I'm, I'm sure Brookfield's pretty similar. Um, Unless you're a newcomer, like me. I've only lived there 25 years. I think I already told you guys that earlier. So, I just moved in 16 years ago. Okay, yeah. So we don't live in a Moriarty household. We live in Mrs. Furch's house. She the was, only person that's from here is him. Okay. She was the fifth grade teacher that everybody who's older than me had and loved her. So that helps me a little bit. Actually, one of my campaigns, I said, you know me. I walked a little white dog on Maple Street. I live in Mrs. Furch's house. <laughs> and people are like, you're... you're you're a jerk for saying that. I said, well, people don't know which, and there's only like 10 houses on the street. So I mean, you know, but anyways, um, I think the difference is you're, you're seen in public, you're on TV, you, you know, you're just seen more often, you're, you're right in their face. And so they can come in and speak to you. As far as how they're treated, uh, which I don't think was really your question, but I, I think you just treat everybody with respect. You know, there's going to be people that are ticked off for some reason. There's going to be people that are happy. There's going to be people that are never happy. There's going to be people that are always happy, even if something bad. Ha yeah, I mean, you know, and I, I think that I am pretty good at sort of going with the flow um, and figuring out what, what makes people tick and, and really what they're ultimately what they're looking for and just treat people nicely. I mean, it's really, it's really easy, I think. Not always easy to do. It's an easy concept. It's an easy concept. It's a straightforward concept. It's thank, difficult to Thank play. you for clarifying. It's, well, like, it's, it's like soccer. Just dribble past them. <laughs> Just get the ball in the net, right? <laughs> Which I try and tell my 10-year-old. Just dribble past them. Right. Yeah, I, I think it's, a, it, it's just you, you get a feel for it. You've you got to get a feel for the community. You've got to get a feel for the people that want to see you, and, and that's fine. I mean, that's what we're here that's what you're hiring a town administrator for to sort of be the the person on the street for you so right. i'm sure you get your own calls anyways so yes yeah uh, we are uh, we've got less than 15 minutes remaining are there it's any just, more questions before we let him ask us i was going to say it's probably his turn uh yep i saw that on the clock too so what questions do you have for us uh i don't have a whole heck of a lot i mean i think i'm curious as to when you're looking to fill the position i know you have a town meeting coming up mm -hmm. Um, um, if I, you've even gotten that far yet. I, I, would, I would say, we're, well, we are, we discussed this briefly um, when the previous candidate was in, and we're not intending to make a decision. We, we don't expect we're making a decision tonight. Yeah, oh no, that's, so I wouldn't expect you but to. I, but, but I mean, I would say that uh, part of it, it's a, I would say we're looking to fill the position sooner rather than later, and it, uh, and so, and part of that's going to depend on who the per candidate is, and what their availability time frame is. Gotcha. Um, my thought is that um, 
It's like, and I, th I think at least that's in line with here that um, I think we're looking to have this figured out in what, within three weeks, maybe two? I think we'll have it decided within two. And then we get to, then, then it's negotiating the deal. Yes. Okay. And then, and then that's going to take a certain amount of time. And then when that, de when the negotiation is finished, then it's how soon could someone start? When does it make sense for someone to start okay. in the world? I, so I, one of the reasons I asked, besides the employment aspect of it, was I didn't know if there was going to be a big push um, for the town to try to get somebody, in fact, before the town, annual town meeting. Because I, I, I did tell Mary Lou and the crew that I was available starting on June 7th. And, <laughs> and they, she, they saw right through it. They started laughing at you? <laughs> they started laughing at me. Well, I will, I but will, I, think, I think I impressed them with that because they're like, oh, this guy is okay. knew what day our show was. <laughs> it shows a little bit of forethought. Exactly. <laughs> um, I, I was just curious. I, I didn't know if, you know, you've got a, a work group already working on articles and, yeah, and I mean, all that fun stuff. I, I'm not speaking for myself. Um, while my thought is it would be nice if the new town administrator could be at the town meeting to see and be seen, my thought is that yeah. if we hired them for them, they would not be very, they would be they, there more they would public hardly be part of it. and not very contributory to the meeting. Uh, understood. Just because they're new. That's fair. I mean, that, that's yeah. very fair, actually, I would say. Yeah, okay. if anything, we'd like to have them in that person in the door prior to the meeting just so that they get to have yeah. the training wheel meeting where they didn't have yeah yeah i think that's fair too yeah, yeah. i mean my thought is is that it's like we've need we need we want someone in here so that as we get close to closing out the year that make sure that so, that the departments are reminded don't forget to encumber your funds it's like i mean the accountant is if, generally if, good about letting people know things about that but just staying on top of that, sure. that everyone's doing their is working towards getting the year closed out. Yep. Yeah, if I mean, we were expecting the new town administrator to have played a role in town meeting, then the day we got the last town administrator's mm -hmm. resignation, we would have been searching for an interim sure. and had that person in place by now. Yeah. Okay. So, which probably hindsight being 2020 is what we should have done, but that's a story for another day. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And I thought I was out of preparing budgets when I was elected to select board and left finance <laughs> committee behind. Well, I. I figured that's why we didn't talk about getting an interim town administrator was you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I do like me a good spreadsheet. You love it, Tom. You love it. <laughs> you do love you a good spreadsheet. Yeah. So. <laughs> Open, please. I don't think I have anything else. I don't know if you guys, the only thing I did want to do, and I know um, I had provided Charlie some references as far as phone calls go, yeah. but I did bring letters. I, oh, I mean, I, you didn't ask. But I thought, you yeah. know, there are three separate letters. Um, oh, are these three? From three two separate, two? yeah. I didn't bring, oh, okay. oh, okay. I didn't bring nine cop or how, <laughs> three, six, right. nine. Yeah. Right. We'll, we'll, I, I just wanted you to have them for, for whatever it's worth. Because uh, mm -hmm. I didn't know if after the fact you'd say, hey, by the way, w we need three references. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I said, hey, we can be lead them off. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I try. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you try to plan for everything and, you know. And then yep. reality says, oh, this way. Correct. Usually. Mm -hmm. But no, I, I have no further questions. Thank you. I would just thank you for, for having me here and thank the townspeople for those that are going to watch this tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and thank your, uh, your committee, your, your screening mm -hmm. committee. I got a very good vibe from them, by the <laughs> way. Not that I'm not getting one from you. I, I went home and told my wife, I said, you know, that Brookfield's got it going on. Uh, and I'm not just saying that. I, I said all five of them were just like easy to speak speak with, speak to. And I know you guys have a job to do as well. But you know, it was. Uh, I just want to publicly comment that that your presence tonight is even more impressive than your first interview. Uh, you just you just seem to be more personal with these three. I don't know if that's the function of these three people or, or what, but. <laughs> Second time's a charm. Thank you. It's, I, I, it's I, Brad's boyish charm. I, <laughs> it makes everyone I, Thank you. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Maybe they're laughing at my answers. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Likewise. Hopefully we'll see you again.
Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. And so in a few weeks, is you'll yep. have done all your stuff and yay or nay, I'll hear from somebody. And Absolutely. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. For Thank you. Good, good to have a chance to talk to you. Thank you. Likewise. I hope you... Um, Good luck with the. Thank you. You're welcome. With the uh, upstairs, too. Nice meeting you. Uh, with the upstairs, we have a uh, big redo of our cable TV thing. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. We converted them to an enterprise fund, though. Do you guys have any enterprise funds for water not. or sewer or any no, of that stuff? No, uh, we do not have any enterprise funds. Um, I guess the ambulance has a revenue account. They they are self funded. Yes. Which yep. I don't that, I don't think they're an enterprise fund. Similar to yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's an accounting it's an accounting thing, you know. They, yeah. Um, they don't the town budget doesn't fund them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank nice you. Nice you. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Adios. Yep. Hey, we got we got five we got five minutes before the next candidate's need to arrive. All right. Water, so I can refill it. Yeah. I will tenant with a broken refrigerator. That, that was the delivery company. So um, got you so you, you, so you, got, you got to deal with that. Um, <laughs> right. Not the right night for it. Yeah. All right, down. Five minute recess. Please stand by. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's that? Yeah. 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 I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, when I'm done, this would be a nice, like, maybe not in this town. <laughs> so, someone, someone brought that up though. It was um, Bruce Clark was talking to someone who, who was like a, a former big wig somewhere. He said, well, I think I'm going to retire. I'm just going to throw my head in for the town administrator. And he had no no experience or anything else. But he just said, I'm going to do my retirement. Yeah. yeah. And Bruce said he was offended because he said it takes a lot to, you know. Right. But the oh, only, that, reason, the only was... reason why I'm saying it would be a retirement job for me is because of the number of years I've been doing like science select board and mm -hmm. finance committee and or advisory committee. And, well, I mean, all, all of these people, that's really their major mm -hmm. qualification. But the, I the, mean, the, after the, nine the bull run guy, yeah. I mean, he, I, I basically grilled him on, on budget stuff just because yes. that was my question for the, the yeah. group. Well, especially with, his account, especially with his account stuff. Especially with his account stuff. First candidate. 
His, his personality didn't, didn't come out this time as much, though, unfortunately. Once I get to the address, he said, oh, when you pull in the driveway, you can see it. It's like, okay, perfect. Yeah. That's, that's, I just didn't want to get there and find out it was big like Hamilton, and if they were way in back, it's like, no. I wouldn't know where, yeah. it's like, yeah, no, but yeah. it's like, that was what I was worried about. Yeah. So that's why I said, I want you to tell me where to, where I should look for you. It's like, yeah. okay. But yeah, if it's small, that's fine. <laughs> I'm just going to say, see what the other guy looks like. I never got the chance to talk to him, but I just want to see what he looks like. And then, Fair enough. Yeah. Candidate <laughs> <Candy, laughs> number three. <laughs> Belchertown. Yep. It's like he's on the select board in Belchertown. He's got to be from there. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> well, let's see. Actually, yeah, May 2021 20, 20, to present. <coughs> he looks like more of a sucker than we are. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> this would be like if you went on the board like 10 years ago. Yeah. Or more. Right. And then stayed on for yeah. another couple <laughs> decades. <laughs> the finance committee seems to be definitely a trap to select for. Well, so actually, when I ran the first time, mm -hmm. so you know the story of like my my very dubious history, right? What, that you're not a straight shooter. Yeah, all well, that too. <laughs> okay. But I don't fly straight. Oh, was that the one? Yeah, I don't fly straight. So, and I and and the first time you put that on the board, I said I took a picture of my shoes and said, you know, uh, uh, I prefer the term comfortable shoes to doesn't fly straight. But that's just, that's just me. But uh, <laughs> anywho. Um, um, first time I ran, nobody pulled papers for select. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. And both me and Linda were right in candidates. And I actually, I, I literally knew. So I had lived in town for a number of years. I had just bought my house right in the center of town. I had walked in to find out why my tax bill tripled okay, like basically the day after I bought my house because they hadn't the adjusted the, the valuation on my house in 30 years in like 30 years basically <laughs> right and then because I bought the house suddenly and it popped up fixed right? it. and actually fixed it right and there were people well, okay. screeching that's at each close. other in the town hall it was the former treasurer and the former and accountant screeching at each other in the town hall what year was this? Like 2014, 2015? Oh God! Around then? It must yeah. have been. No, when did you? Twelve. It must have been 2012. I moved to Brookfield in 2005, but I lived south oh, okay. of the river in a rental property. Mm -hmm. When did you move up here? Uh, I think it was either 2011 or 2012. I bought. The oh, I thought it was longer. Than that. Yeah, but uh, um, and uh, so I ran. I. I was on speaking terms with like and eight people in this town, like, and I got like 200 time. votes, <laughs> right? Because I wasn't Linda. Tom beat me. And then I did. It's like I was like yes. And then and then the following uh, year, I ran against. I, I was so on the like finance committee for a year. Didn't and then I ran against Stephen Comtois, and I lost by three votes. And uh, and I just stayed on the I stayed on the advisory committee for two out of the three years of his term. But they actually refused to reappoint me my last year because I had challenged something about the what the accountant was doing relative to certain. Accounts between not us this and school, account. not this yeah. account, but the Betty account. Yeah, <laughs> that two accounts ago. Yeah, Saint Betty, 
Um, and because I challenged St. Betty, I wasn't reappointed to advisory for a year. And then I ran, I was going to run against Steve again, and he withdrew his papers. Yeah. Is that when the uh, news started to come out? Yeah. 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 He, I, my understanding is he, uh, he withdrew from the race right after the... Uh, the video Look, came he's out. driving. Video. Yeah, of his, oh, of his that one. Of yeah, his fourteen-year-old kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, so that's. But yeah. So. It, so, but when I didn't win, people told me you need to get on advisory and figure out your head from your butt relative to we'll municipal finance and what's different between yeah. like public corporations and municipal government. Mm -hmm. So I took the advice and I did. Yep. Because I like math. I do math. I like, I like math, but that's definitely a weak point of mine. Oh, is municipal that, finance. Have you gone to the class? Uh, yeah, and I'm one of those people, I, if I do it a few times, then it's like very It'll solid and ingrained. Yeah. 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 Um. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but, yeah, so that was, so, and, and then I've just kind of stayed on since. Mm -hmm. so. I'd be better if they did. And I don't know if they do. Do they do an in person class, in person class, or is it? Is it's it, it is an in person class, the DLS class. It no, I did an online one. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, because oh, you probably came on after like COVID and all that and craziness. It's, it's now that's how they yeah. push it. I think, it think they online. have a. I think they still have a one yeah. face to face one that's usually after wow. the spring election. And I went to MMA the and they didn't really have anything there for it either. Really? Mm -hmm. That's too bad. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping they would have. Yeah, because because it, it, yeah, they usually did pretty well. Yeah, just, just, just to make sure we don't drift into discussing any business. Yeah, that's fine. Because we're just chit chatting, and I know that it can chit, fall chit, out of mind. Chit chatting is fine. Yeah, not chit. I know about chit chat. Laughing about my history of why I even do this. <laughs> and I, and I, keep, I, keep, I keep joking that first time I ran, I, there were eight people in town that were talking to me, and my goal was to have about the same eight people still talking to me by the time I'm done. <laughs> what? <laughs> You, you didn't have to have me talking to you before you, you brought me under the finance committee. I mean, for a while I thought I was definitely going to be done, and I think I'm callous enough that I would go and go again for the second round. You would go again. <laughs> would do again. Maybe so. emotional. Oh, that would be bad. That, yeah. That, that would well, be very sad. That, that, would, uh, that would reflect eight, poorly eight on me. Eight versus nine to ten. <laughs> That's true. I, I wouldn't be Sorry. sad if the meeting was earlier. <laughs> I'm a little surprised. I'm surprised. He was very responsive about it. I checked my email. I didn't see anything. Oh. I wonder if that. I wonder if that. Oh yeah, the phone number probably works. Phone number on his resume. Okay. Oh yeah. You want me to you call, call him? him? Yeah. Why don't you? You get. You let them get further along that path than me. My phone's unlocked. That's about as far as I've gotten. I just want to, before we... Yeah. If he's, if he's not coming, then he's not coming. It's like if he's going to be here in a few minutes, he'll be here in a few minutes. That's too bad. I was going to say, was, and he, was was here, all... he met with you guys in person before, so he's driven here before. Yes. Yeah, so it's like, okay, so it's yeah, unlikely. I mean, we met at the police station, but... Yeah, that's the other two guys. Yeah, I was gonna say that's same 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 driving duration from Belchertown. Yeah. No lower, shorter than the other. Hi, Mr. Aponte. Uh, Beth Coughlin from the Brookfield Board of Selectmen. Pretty good. Oh, is the door locked? Oh. You know, I thought I heard it pop. I meant to tell was, you okay. to like go it check it again because I heard it. Like you aren't even going in and out. Yeah. All of a sudden, I heard a pop out there, and it sounded like that's what it was. Oh, like the lock clicked. Yeah. From all. Oh. Yeah. That well, there's that, an that issue with working. there's an issue with that door. I think okay. sometimes it pops like that. I mean, I missed that. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, you have a key, you have a key as a way to make it so you can turn it so it's unlocked with a key. Like, I physically have the key to the door. Can I turn it? Oh, turn the lock so like it doesn't think, shut? I don't think the key they do will something. permanently unlock it. I think the key can only de-latch it so it opens, and then the only way to get it to stay unlocked is to push the bar and then use but the But if you it. notice during the day, that door doesn't shut all the way, and I don't know if they do something to it so it stays open a little bit, so it doesn't, in case it does pop. I'll ask Mike. Yeah. 
Yeah, we should definitely have that looked at because that we don't want. That's it's not good that the front door locks when the building's supposed to be open. And, no, and it's it's. I mean, I've, and I've most come people here know about the side door, but I've come here at eleven a.m. and it be locked. Yeah, but it's. Like, but I mean, like, Karen's that, usually right there. Yeah. <laughs> but also at that time, it's like if you know that the side door with the ramp with the handicapped yeah. access that needs to be open when the building's open, also. Yeah. But if you don't know it's there, it's just sort of like. I didn't even think of unlocking that until he mentioned unlock the side door, and I'm like. Yeah. What are you I, talking I checked, about? When I came in, I checked the side door just to make yeah. sure it was unlocked. I, I don't need I don't need an OML complaint. Yeah. Whatever. Jeff, did you lock our candidate out? I hope we didn't end up in North Brookfield. No, he's um. The I, door was I, locked. We think we think the door locked. No, but he's he's not out there, and she's talking to him. And he said, "Well, I'm at the town offices. We don't have a town yeah. office, and the only place that has town offices, I think, is North." Oh, Brookfield. maybe he went down to the police station. Okay. Is that where you guys she'll, met? She'll, is that where you guys were meeting with him? Yeah. She'll figure it out. I'm not sure. It's like, it's like Google navigate me to 6th Central trust. Street in Brooklyn. Right. Oh, you heard that? That's what she told him. She said, it, it's 6. <laughs> no, I know. It's like, it's like, well, that's what, I mean, it's like, that, that's the simplest thing. It's like, get your navigation going, give it this destination, and drive and have it guide you there. Well, it's the, like, and then you don't I thought, about I thought you were doing a, a mind meld with her because that's exactly what she said when she was up there right talking to her. Well, in mine, actually, if you put in my address, it brings you down to the bottom my of the hill. GPS it doesn't bring you up the hill. <laughs> taking me the wrong way down one way streets three in times North. in a row in Worcester. You can believe that. He's in North Brookfield. That's what I thought. That's what I said. Oh. The town offices in North Brookfield. Huh. So he can be here in 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Are we gonna make? Oh, that's not good. <laughs> uh, I, I, are we gonna stick it out, or do we want to reschedule? I would rather stick it out. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna stick it out. If you, if you're still willing, we'll we'll wait for you. It's like, I'd rather not have to mobilize again. Okay. That's good. Okay, great. Thanks. Yep. Bye. Well, good thing you called, Beth. Yeah, it's in North Brookfield. He's probably interviewing for both positions. <laughs> and must have crossed up which one he was supposed to be at tonight. Because they're looking for a town administrator right, too. Right. They are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oops. And actually, oh, that's fair. He can, he can interview well. I had met with one of the select board members, and it was something I wanted to talk about for a future agenda. They approached me about um, tapping into their sewer system. There's intermunicipal grants that are available. Oh. Well, to interconnect sewer systems? Yeah. Oh, okay. But when I was talking to him, he goes, any interest in uh, splitting a town administrator? I'm like, I think you guys have a lot to clean up before. <laughs> before we <laughs> that you to might use up all our town administrator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. <laughs> That was that was a nicer thing you said than when I, when I made a reference to the schools in uh, Spencer to uh, someone who lived in Spencer. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <clears throat> Does anyone know when um, Bertiom and Durant have their office hours here in town? There no. Was. And actually, that was something I wanted to talk to Karen about was letting us know when that happens yes well i mean it's like oh, but, or at least but his no, no, but his but his, but his guy keeps reaching out to me on i did day. talk to him did you mm -hmm. okay um well seemed, it's not on our agenda right, so right. now there there, there there are a couple of things i want to it's like it's oh it sort of occurred to me yeah it might not be bad to talk to them let's put it on an agenda about what we want to talk to him about and tell him mm -hmm. to come mm -hmm. All right, I'll see if we can squeeze that in to, on uh, May 2nd. I don't want to... I don't want to exchange public discussion, yeah. open, open meeting. And I don't know if you, the, uh, on, I don't know if you want to, but the conversation that I had with the select board member about the sewer, do you want to... Put that uh, on there, yeah. Put it on that. Put I mean, I can just tell you if in five minutes the conversation we had. Yeah, that's fine. Um, invite, um, we should probably invite Dennis there just so that uh, no. we should share with him. Okay. I can talk to him offline. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. I just, I just thought it'd be good. I, I guess I'd say either, I would, I would recommend that you talk to him in advance or invite him to be around when we yeah. have that discussion. Yeah. I just don't want him thinking that we're discussing something that's in his domain yeah. without involving him. Yeah. It's just a courtesy.
Ladies and gentlemen, the excitement of town government. <laughs> Feel it. I'm sure Jacob's gonna <laughs> edit all this part out. <laughs> um, I don't know if he. I don't know if he legally can. Unless we. Unless we didn't, we go into we didn't officially go oh, into recess. Oh, go into recess. Because we're technically we are in session, and he and I don't think it it should be the. I don't think he should be cutting out stuff in session. He might want to put something on there saying nothing happens. It's like. Well, anyone watching it ahead. already got so bored that they yeah, shut yeah, it off. You, you can jump ahead to this point and it won't mean anything. And those those who don't trust us will watch it, and they will get to watch us like it's planned. <laughs> and those who take the advice will jump ahead and skip this. Yeah, but what about that secret meeting we had in the hall? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do know people watch this because someone asked me to get my impression of Rocco, like Chris Keller's gone rogue yeah. here tonight, please. So, Thank you. I watch it. Mr. Keller. Yes. <laughs> hey, we're in recess. Are we on recess? <laughs> we are not on recess. <laughs> we are in session. How many dogs do you have? Seven. Seven? Not all the same size. Because you Six have of them are. two big ones, right? Six of them are big dogs. Really? Yeah, they were, they were feisty last night. I heard them barking when I left here. <laughs> they were being Is that your really dogs bad. Barking? They were being really bad last night. <laughs> Very bad dogs. We lost our dog last. Uh, Good Friday. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. The worst part about losing a dog is having children when you lose a dog and they keep revisiting it. <laughs> yeah. It drags on the grief. That is a lot of dog food. <laughs> it's less than you would think. They're really? actually very easy keepers. Because they're bred to work, you know, the, most, of what, most of the dogs that I have are bred to work sheep. And if they're not actually do, at that level of activity. Mm -hmm. So are they like, I mean, I know I have friends that have like the Australian Shepherds mm -hmm. and they're, they need to run a lot. Yeah. Mine are pretty good. Mm -hmm. that they're attending breed rather than so australian shepherds are a driving breed right right and so they're always moving mm -hmm. um the type of dogs that i have actually um, control the sheep with their presence so they are much better at standing in one place and looking noble mm -hmm. um, <laughs> than anything else so I mean, don't get me wrong, they're active dogs. And like, yeah. like the puppy, right now we have a puppy and he needs a certain amount of like ball fetch, mm -hmm. like do stuff time. Yeah. But they also know how to do nothing. Yeah. So. My dog was excellent at doing nothing. <laughs> we had a golden retriever. <laughs> you haven't met on a dog. No, I haven't. <laughs> Interesting. Seven years old. Oh, wow. And, uh, Default position is to growl. Oh dear. Oh, agitate. Oh, <laughs> you gotta love it. Yeah. Let's see. I'm used to my dogs ignoring the boats, mm. not paying any attention to that. This one pays attention to the fishermen. Are the, the boats lake. already out? Hmm? Are boats already out on the lake? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. The, the say, minute it gets warm. Has the ice melted? The ice <laughs> melted yeah. yeah. Heck, sometimes before the ice melts. <laughs> then, then, then they're ice fishing. <laughs> it's only when the ice is there but not thick enough that people not really fish. Yeah. Well, I saw people like ice. They had the ice sailing. Yeah, I there. saw that. Yeah. Oh, on Quebec on, Pond? On the, yeah, on South Pond. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it was only once or twice in North Pond this year. Yeah, I saw it a couple times, yeah. 
But it was like the, the following week the ice just disappeared. Yeah, the following week the ice was gone, but but they did have a pretty good crowd on South yeah. Pond. Yeah, go up yeah, there. So that's because that's the that's the uh, that's the duck pond. I mean, that's not it's shallow enough that it's well, freezing. Like bog. Yeah. It's an overgrown bog, basically. It's supposed to. When does it disappear? How many years? We were up in, uh, going up into Vermont. I mean, those people, when they ice fish, it looks like you know, they'll, they'll be ice fishing like on a little island of ice. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I don't see anybody in that. Oh, it's, I think it's, I think it's a police. Sounds like a delivery it's a truck. truck. Down, by the high, down by police. Almost looks like a flatbed from Highway Act, but I can't tell if the window is just a little distorted looking at it at a sharp angle. to the open position, uh, the open grant writer position. Um, I believe we've received um, resumes. Mm -hmm. do we want, when do we want to start discussing the, uh, the candidates for the permanent, uh, permanently holding that position? It's like, do we, do we want to get started soon or try and squeeze it in around the budget stuff or just punt it until June? I would talk to Kathy if you could. She, we might be. I would tell you that it needs to be some middle ground between punting to June and doing it right this minute. So. <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm just thinking that May second. I would say not May second, but it's yeah. probably worth trying to get together the week of May twelfth. But I, I think she's got all the. I think Kathy has all the current projects. No, I, I, I think things are. I don't need a discussion. I, I don't. I don't think there's an immediate urgency to filling it, and we do have an interim in that position. I would, I would like to fill it prior to town meeting. Okay, then. Yeah, no, I'd like we, to fill we, it. We, yeah. we may need to meet on the ninth to do that. We'll. I won't schedule it for the second, and then we'll see where things are. If it looks like the sixteenth is good, we'll talk about it then. If we need to pull it forward, we'll pull it forward. So oh, and in, in the police union, I got an email today. Either the twenty sixth or 29th, we're going to have a next mediation date. Sure. Uh, in May? No, in April. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's Friday or Monday? All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, How are you? Oh, geez. That's all right. Don't worry. My phone's you guys. How are you? Brad, nice to meet you. And Beth, I've been working to talk to you. Yeah, thank you. Good. Good to speak with you. This is the hot seat. No, over here with the microphone. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you guys for... <laughs> Uh, stay a little a little later on a Friday for me. Right. <laughs> Appreciate that. No worries. We got uh, we, we met with two candidates and we want to be with the third, and sure. that way we can we, we can call them up. That's right. That's right. Okay. All right. So let's get started. Uh, tell us about yourself. Uh, well, as you can see from my cover letter and resume, I'm certainly a non-traditional uh, applicant in that I have nearly three decades of management experience in the private sector. Mm -hmm two decades of management in the uh, uh, municipal sector, mm -hmm. uh, specifically with Belchertown. But the, the combination actually I've, I've found to be pretty good for the simple fact that I've, I'm able to utilize a lot of the uh, same skill sets and it kind of reinforces them, if you will. Things I've learned at work in the private sector, I'm able to use in the municipal sector and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, budgeting, personnel, uh, forecasting, capital planning, uh, all, the, all of these types of things I've, I've done numerous times. <laughs> uh, budgeting, I mean, obviously, with, uh, when you include my finance committee, uh, which is another eight years of experience, I've probably done the better part of 25 budgets, mm -hmm. municipal budgets, not even including the, the private sector ones. Mm -hmm. So I, it, you know, with that, with that skill set, I think it's, it's pretty unique that I can bring it to bear. Uh, as a town administrator, and I would love the opportunity. Okay. All right. Well, let's kick off. Let me kick off the questions. Um, 
to, to my mind, there is a uh, the the role of town administrator has a couple of legs under it that are, are skill sets that support it. And uh, to my mind, those are there's financial, there's legal, there's personnel in the uh, supervisory sense, yeah. and I will uh, and 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 maybe a customer service one dealing with the. Uh, sure. And so I would say, how do you um, how would you um, rank your skills or ability in those from uh, best to uh, still pretty good, but the, the, not the best? Well, I mean, personnel, definitely, that's, that's probably more forte uh, because of all the management experience, once again, private sector, public sector. Uh, so I would say I'm, I'm pretty strong in that. A lot of, lot of experience uh, with regards to that, performance reviews, uh, even disciplinary, um, hiring, um, interviewing, that types of stuff. Very familiar with it, lots of experience in that. Mm -hmm. uh, legal aspect, um, well, being on, on the select board, uh, you're just through osmosis. You, you start to pick up a lot of the mass general laws and mm -hmm. you know, what can you know, be a chapter uh, 30B for procurement, uh, the, the chapters for forestry land and recreational land, things along those lines. Mm -hmm. So you definitely pick up a, a lot of that. But I think I'm also, I guess, aware enough of the fact when I'm outside of my comfort zone and when it's time to pick up the phone and talk to town council. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, obviously if you, if, you've got a, if you go down the, the wrong route, so to speak, or wrong path, you could get yourself and your town in a lot of trouble. So when in doubt, it's not a bad idea to go talk to town council. Mm -hmm. uh, what were with the other ones? Uh, let's see, I would say uh, uh, finance and customer service. Uh, well, finance, as I said, I mean, tons and tons of, of budgeting. Um, been through uh, several bondings as well with Belchertown for uh, high school and elementary school. Also, uh, we've done some consolidated type uh, capital um, purchases that we were able to consolidate into a bond when the interest rates were, were very, very low. Uh, we found that to be very helpful. So from a financial aspect, once again, very, very comfortable with that. Lots of experience doing that. So I, I would rate myself fair, you know, fairly high with regards to that. Mm -hmm. And as far as customer service, I mean, I, I guess being a, a selectman was the ultimate in customer service. If I, if I didn't do my job correctly, I wasn't getting voting back in. In fact, I used to even say, you know, if people would say, oh, you know, you're going to get in trouble if you just, you know, say yes or, or no for this particular issue. It's like, well, I'm going to do what I think is best for the town of Belchertown. And if the people disagree, well, they're going to give me a performance review in three years. <laughs> they're not going to vote for me and, you know, the, the writing be on the wall. Well, you know, knock on wood, I, I won seven terms, so I, I guess I was doing a few things right. <laughs> okay. So I would say, once again, strong, strong with regards to customer service. Right. Thank you. Brad? Um, what's your experience in working with intermunicipal agreements and what's your approach to kind of regionalization? Yeah, well, actually with regionalization, uh, Belchertown is a um, part of the regional uh, district for Pathfinder for vocational training. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're actually, Belchertown is actually the largest component or member of that. So very familiar with that. Um, the, it's, it's a different type of collaboration, if you will, uh, because the way the charter was set up with Pathfinder, it took a super majority in, in other words, to, to override anything like, say, a school committee would do. So you quickly found out that was very difficult. So what you would end up doing is saying, okay, I'm not going to wait to the end. If, if there's something that we think will really benefit Belchertown, we got to start the process early. And we got to talk to the superintendent. we got to talk to the, uh, the, the supervisor of, of the school. We have to talk to them very early on so that we can start to, to build towards that. So it, it never reaches the point where we have to try to get you know four or five other towns to try to vote with us to to get something to the pass that the school committee didn't want so very aware of that um as far as uh, intermunicipal agreements we have several of them actually we, we even have them with umass for everything from you know public safety um, um emergency management things along those lines uh we've um actually literally in about a month's time actually maybe a little more than a month's time our police and fire dispatch is going to be out of Wilbraham. And we just finished the, uh, the agreement with Wilbraham so that they, we can regionalize that. Tremendous savings for, for us as well. Mm -hmm. Do you board, you, Belgian Town borders Wilbraham? 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, that much. Right, no, yeah, <laughs> but it's only for dispatch purposes. It's like ours yeah. is out of. New it's kind tree. of like ours is out of New Brain Tree, and we okay, don't border New Brain Tree. I, I guess but it's, dispatch it's, is out of there. It's just, yeah, yeah, I just never thought they were that close. But it's yeah. like okay. Yeah, there's yeah. Bits But it makes of sense it. that yeah, this is this is this lends this is lends itself more to a uh, this type of arrangement than say sharing a truck between DPWs. True. Abs absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So, a um, couple of different things I want to ask you about. Sure. Okay. One is, um, where do you view the town administrator role as kind of fit in, in terms of kind of the, the town departments, the finance team, the select board, like what do you, what's kind of like your vision of this position and, and like what the intent is and what your intent would be in it? Sure. I mean, obviously the select board is the policy making board and as such, I feel the town administrator's job is to support the board, provide as much information, the facts, the details, and if asked, opinion. If you, if you all ask uh, my opinion as town administrator, geez, you, you know, what's your feeling about this particular issue? I think it's incumbent upon myself to say, I'm in favor of it or against it, and here's the reasons why. But once I've done that, I've put my two cents in, if you will, and if the board decides, well, you said no, we're gonna say yes. My job at that point is to say, all right, I, I hear you. It is now my job as town administrator to do anything and everything in my power to implement that to the best of my ability. And that, I think it, it, it actually goes a step further because that very next day, you know, depending on the, the size and scope of the particular issue, gather your department heads and direct reports and say, okay, we discussed it last night, the board wants to do this. And even if everyone's, oh, I thought we weren't gonna do that, we didn't wanna, no, we're gonna do that. And my job at that point, even though maybe I was, I was against it, is to champion the decision of the, the policy board and say, we're gonna implement this and we're gonna implement this to the best of our ability. And I think that's the type of thing, I mean, certainly something in the private sector I've, I've had to do where you know, my, my VP or my CIO would come up with a decision and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, how the heck are we ever gonna do that? That never happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, this, guess what? I've got my marching orders and now I had to sell to, to my guys and they, you know, they might be doing the same thing, but then, okay, we got all our gripes out of the way, let's go make it happen and make it happen to our best of our ability. So I see the, the town administrators being a key link there to be a champion, if you will, uh, of implementing whatever decisions and policies that the board, uh, the board makes. My second question, because I've done this one as kind of a not related but two-part question, sure. is good turnover, bad turnover, describe. Good turnover, bad turnover. I, I'm assuming you're, you're, you're not talking patriots, we're, we're talking no. <laughs> employees. No, every turnover is a bad turnover yeah, yeah. If, it's, if we're talking about the patriots. Yeah, I'm talking about personnel turnover specifically. Sure, I mean, I, I think a problem there, bad turnover would be um, employees are not satisfied. And, you know, are they not satisfied with working conditions, with the, the pay, um, with the appreciation perhaps from, from management? I think it's incumbent when you do start to see turnover, and frankly, I'm a firm believer in any turnover that an exit interview occur. And, you know, ho hopefully the employee at that point is going to be relatively forthright and explain why they're leaving. No, I mean, they might be leaving just because, well, you know what, my, my parents are ill and we're moving out to Wisconsin to help take care of them. Well, okay, there's not a lot we can do there. On the flip side, you might start to hear a common theme. Well, well you know, I, I got an extra $15,000 over here, or we weren't appreciated at all, and, you know, as a result, I'm moving over to, to another job where in another town or another company that we are appreciated. That's bad turnover. That's bad turnover because you've got a problem, some type of a systemic problem in the organization, and it behooves you to, one, identify it, 
and to come up with a resolution for that. You have to come up with a game plan. Because if not, that's just going to continue to feed. It's going to be like a cancer just eating at the, the organization. Now, as far as good to turnover, I guess that's probably a case where it's you know, almost inherent in a small town. If you have strong, talented, hardworking people, we'll never be able to pay as much as Worcester or Springfield or even like a Northampton or something along those lines. And you start to lose good people because now they're, they're expanding, if you will, to other areas that are larger. And even in the private sector, I mean, certainly in, in DPW, that's, that's a, a risk that's always there. There's skill sets that DPW employees will have that's certainly transferable to, to different pub, uh, private sector positions. So that's, a, I guess, you know, I'll even put it in quotes, good turnover. It's good because you have good people and they've been trained well and they're doing good jobs. But because of that, they almost kind of outgrow a, a small town and what a small town is, is able to, to do. But I think the silver lining, if you will, with that is whatever made that employee a good employee, hopefully that is systemic in the organization through training, through uh, recognition, through teamwork, camaraderie, that type of stuff. Then you say, okay, maybe we lost good employee A, but we have employee B, and we think we can grow employee B to be every bit as good as employee A, and just kind of keep that, that chain rolling. So I guess that's how I would see good turnover versus bad turnover. Thank you. All right, uh, let's see, I would, let's, I think I already asked that, yeah, I already asked that question. Uh, what would you see as the, uh, what, do you, what do you think, what do you see as the, uh, the challenges and the difficulties facing the person who um, takes on this role? Well, I, th I think obviously a key, and probably can be said for just about any small town in, in Massachusetts, is economic growth. Uh, a lot of your, your uh, revenue stream is coming through the taxpayer. And that's just gonna continue. Uh, one of the good things is you all don't really have a lot of state aid, you're not really very dependent upon state aid because heaven knows the state is not doing well mm -hmm. <laughs> and state aid is not going to increase and it's certainly not going to keep the uh, rate with infl at the Actually, inflation we're, rate. We're highly dependent on state aid. Yeah. Excuse me? We're highly, highly dependent, dependent on state aid. Oh really? Because I, I, when I was looking in the DLS report, it looked like you guys were around 30% or so of your, of your revenue. 50%. No, it's thirty percent. Is it thirty percent? The um, it's it's uh, the the aid it, the the aid is mm -hmm. about three million, but that's the right, offsets it's the and the expenses. Oh, drop that's where they really get you. Two point six million. Gotcha. Yeah. The, gotcha. Was, oh, I've been living this. this. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking. I, I always think of it because it's because it only half only half is property taxes, but our local receipts is fills in. Lo yeah, I was gonna say local receipts is another million. It's like the 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 levy is about 60% of our budget, and the school is 50% of the budget. Mm -hmm. school yeah. takes 50, the school is 50% of our budget. Yeah. So yeah. in that regard, you all are doing, I mean, certainly better in Belchertown. Well, that's it's, true. One yeah. of the things that's killed in Belchertown right now, frankly, is the fact that Belchertown's a lot more dependent upon state aid, and state aid just is not there. Yeah. And it's certainly, like I said, not increasing even close to the inflation rate. So I guess kudos to, to you all and into the department heads and, and the financial management team. Um, so with that being said, if, if you really want to continue to keep up with the inflation rate, you want to be able to increase programs and capital items and so, things along those lines, then you have to grow your, your business tax base. And once again, that's just about every small town in Massachusetts is, can say the same thing. Now, one of the things that I think that is certainly a plus is the fact that you all have our, uh, an economic target area. And by being an economic target area, that opens up a lot of different financial incentives that you might be able to offer. So not only, in, in fact, in Belchertown, that was one of the things that has certainly helped us is we became, well, we kind of piggybacked on with where. Uh, to uh, have a designated economic target area. And as such, we were able to keep two businesses, local businesses that were expanding, we were able to keep them within the town, um, but also with the former state school land, we were able to offer tax incentives, TIFs, tax incremental yeah. financing, yeah. Um, to attract. You know, because cause if you think about it, the way, the way I've always tried to, to tell you know, my, fe my fellow selectmen 
is we're a business in regards to trying to pull in businesses and um, that economic growth. We have to differentiate ourselves from everybody else. Sorry. And how do we market ourselves so that we do stick out and say, hey, come, you know, come relocate to, to our, our town. And like I said, with, with you all having that economic target area, you can offer some of those tax incentives. So now when that business owner is looking saying, hmm, okay, that's, that's a lot more interesting. You now let's take a good hard look at that. So now you're, you're kind of going to the top of the stack. So that's obviously a, a big plus because that's where you want to be because it is very, very competitive out there. So I, I think that's a, a key there. I would take that and, and really run with it for the simple fact that would help differentiate yourself from all the other contiguous uh, and comparable towns. So I, I, that was one thing. I mean, as town administrator, I would certainly try to run with that. Thank you. Um, so one of the things that we're going through as a change with the town is um, the new marijuana legislation. And um, we're just starting with that. And I guess my question to you is, what experience do you have with marijuana legislation in Belcher Town, and how is that? Yep, we, we actually have one dispensary. Yeah. <clears throat> We've probably had seven, maybe eight, that have kind of gone through the process, so to speak. Yeah. <clears throat> but one of the things we did early on is we set up a zoning uh, bylaw. Yeah. And literally took exactly what we had, or I don't say exactly, but 90 to 95% of what we had for, say, liquor stores. And we just superimposed that and said, okay, let's do that for cannabis. Uh, obviously, just because of the legislation, you're gonna, you'll make some tweaks here and there, but that's kind of the mindset we had. And it's been very much accepted in, in town by the townspeople, even you know, folks that were dead set against the, the, the law. But mm -hmm. once it became law, one of the things uh, as a selectman had to convince them is it, it is the law. Right. <laughs> so they, they can do this <laughs> legally. If, if we try to force them out, that's gonna open up you know, it's probably some lawsuits and yeah. it's going to end up costing us more money. So let's let's try to manage this and manage this properly. And that's why I said, let's start with a zoning bylaw. We have something on the books that people are comfortable with, you know, how we address liquor licenses and, and liquor stores. Bring that forward. That passed with that town meeting. <clears throat> and then obviously what you want to do with your... I mean, there's so many I's to dot and T's to cross with, with regards to these agreements. You just have to make sure that you do that. And that's one of those cases where absolutely, you want to make sure you have town council looking over and your you shoulder. you through that movie, it sounds like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, he has the t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so, I mean, yeah, that's basically the game plan that we've had at Belchertown. It's been successful. Like I said, unfortunately, only one of them has really gone from A to Z. Yeah. Uh, we've had several that have gone from A to Q or so A to more S. Than us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, usually people ask you in a job interview, what is your greatest accomplishment, right? But I'm going to flip the, flip the uh, switch on that one. Sure. Tell me about your most glorious failure. <laughs> um, well, actually, because I'll, I'll, I, I probably have a, a few of them on the private sector, I'll, I'll, I'll stick to the, the public sector. You can, you can pick either. It doesn't matter. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go with the public one because it's, it's also fairly recent. <clears throat> we had a long-term town administrator, uh, literally been in the town administrator for 30 years, and he was a very strong personality, but very, very, I, mean, I, I used to say when, when, he, when you cut him, he bled black and orange, which are the team colors in, in Belchertown. And a new group came on the select board, and they didn't necessarily like the fact that he wasn't a yes man. And as such, they were not going to, all. I mean, truly, out of the blue, they said, um, they, we had a, an executive session to, with regards to his contract, which was coming up for renewal. And all of a sudden, there was three of them that said, yeah, we don't think we are, we're going to uh, renew his contract. And I, I mean, li literally, I was shocked. I was like... How many members? Five. Five uh, members. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, what's the problem? I, I said, I'm not aware of, a, of an issue here. What's the issue? 
no one could tell me what the issue was or the problem was. Because my theory was, well, okay, if there's a problem, I mean, who knows, maybe I'm blind to it. Let's identify the problem and then let's talk to him about it and come up with some type of game plan so that we can resolve it. And, you know, especially coming completely out of the blue with all my management experience, I was like, you know, this just doesn't smell right. <clears throat> well, bottom line, what it came down to is uh, a man with 30 very dedicated, like I said, black and orange years as town administrator didn't have his contract renewed. Or actually, technically, it was extended six months. And then he was unceremoniously pushed out the door. And there really wasn't a darn thing I could do about it for the simple fact because a lot of it was occurring during executive session. And as such, you can't talk about it publicly. <clears throat> in fact, since he wasn't even in on it, at least originally, I couldn't even discuss it with him until the bombshell was, was dropped. And <clears throat> I mean, that still to this day just leaves a, a bad taste in my mouth that a man that worked that hard and did so much for the town didn't get a chance to ride off into the sunset. And there wasn't anything I could do about it when he deserved it so much. And like I said, it just, yeah, just grates on me. Shouldn't have been, shouldn't have been that way. Okay, thank you. Let me, actually, let me ask a follow-up question sure. on that. What did you, and I know it's an executive session, so you probably still can't share it, but high level, what was your approach to try to, try <laughs> I, to work through that? Excuse me, I first tried to just get them to talk about it, but they wouldn't talk about it in any detail whatsoever. Huh. Then I actually reached out to the State Ethics Commission for some guidance, because I said, is this, this an open Doesn't meeting law? Right. Yeah. Yeah, is there an open meeting law issue that could potentially be? And as I said, they said, <clears throat> you're going to need some type of documentation, emails, you know, uh, actual memos or, or notes. And they were smart enough not to have that. Um, they didn't use the, if there was emails, and I suspect there probably were emails that went back and forth, none of them were on the town system. system. So, yeah. you know, it, it reached a point as the uh, counselor I was talking to at the, the State Ethics Commission said, do you really want to subpoena AOL and Gmail and Yahoo and, and so yeah. on and so forth to try to get this done? I mean, it's probably not going to work. Yeah. And unfortunately, I said, no, no, it, it, it's, you know, we, we can't do that. That would, I mean, one, I'm not so sure they would even cooperate for something like this because there wasn't a, a law broken per se. This is yeah. more other than, you know, trying to prove a, an open meeting law. So unfortunately at that point, I mean, I tried a couple other avenues. I tried to speak to them individually. Nothing. Nothing. It was a decision that they made, I think probably a year or so beforehand when the third person was elected onto the board. Hmm. And, and like I said, I said, you know, shame on me, I didn't pick up on that. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, as I said, I just never expected anyone to treat them with such disrespect. Yeah. It was just so unnecessary. Yeah, seems odd. So. Um, how, uh, let's see, so Belcher Town has a town administrator. How big is the uh, budget and how many people work for the town? Yeah, um, well, not counting the school. <clears throat> yeah, yeah mm -hmm. schools are separate. Um, the town budget is going to be about $58 million this year. And as far as the town employees, we exclude the uh, schools. We're looking at about 130 Okay. That includes DPW, that, every, everything, everything that would come up through the town administrator. Mm -hmm. And actually, I, I got to change it because about two weeks ago, he became town manager. So <laughs> he's okay. now town manager. Mm -hmm. Are there, um, are there many employees there that do not, that aren't part of the school but don't report to the town administrator? Like as, as an example, here in Brookfield, we have a principal assessor and that position reports to the board of assessors. Okay. And so the town administrator does not have direct authority over them. The town administrator controls the environment and the office in which they work, but has no supervision over their work product. Yep. And so that, that, that's the we have, we have a lot of elected positions. Yeah, yeah I was going to say and, the... And a, and a weak... Uh, a weak town government structure. weak town government structure. Gotcha. No, not, not weak, distributed authority. 
<laughs> Very flat organization. <laughs> yes. Uh, we, we do have actually something uh, almost identical to that, but it's actually on the planning side. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, planning director who reports directly through the elected planning board. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, if you kind of looked at our org chart, there would be a dotted line between the town administrator and the, and the uh, planning director. Mm -hmm. For a simple fact, there's so many things they have to work in, right. you know, together. Um, and there's very good communications between the, the chairman of the planning board and the town administrator. So, and I think that's probably the best way to do it is with that type of distributed uh, authority. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the town administrator really has to be very t in tight communications and constant two-way dialogue with, you know, in this case, the, the uh, planning director, I mean, the uh, planning board and the planning director, or in the case of, of uh, Brookfield, you know, the, the assessor and the board of assessors. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's, it's probably not preferred, but it can certainly work. I've seen it work fine for, for, for many, many years. Okay. Once again, with that communication kind of going both directions. Thank you. How are you with technology and Project management. How oh you... boy, that's a that's a, that's a softball for me. Thirty years of IT experience. Um, yeah, obviously very very comfortable with IT. Um, mm -hmm. I've managed everything from the desktop to the wide area networks, um, contracts, obviously personnel, software, hardware, networks, um, vendor support, things along those lines. I've I've done all of that. Very very comfortable. And what's your approach to project management workflow and stuff like that? Yeah, well, with project management, the, the key, I've you know, obviously done lots of uh, project management, is to make sure you assemble all the key parties. And what I always like to do, kind of you all use the private sector. Uh, I always had someone in the business community be the, what I refer to as the champion. They're my person who's going to sell it to the organization, the business organization. I'm going to work directly with, with them, and I'm going to make sure the IT is there to support whatever direction the business is going. Uh, I'm a firm believer, even though I'm in the IT world, IT doesn't drive the business. The business should drive IT. IT should support the business. The business people, the, the line business people, are the ones that know what they want to do with the business, and I feel it's IT's job to support whatever decisions and policies they make. So that's kind of the approach that I'm I always I'm going to drive to East Hartford twice a week. We've got a job for a director of digital strategy down there. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm going to, in the interest of consistency, and this is a question I picked up from some recent interviews in my day job. Okay. You're driving home tonight. Zombie apocalypse hits. Tell me what your plan is. Ooh, the apocalypse, like the um, the, the the zombies like, are, are like Walking Dead. Like you just walked into into the scene as an extra in uh, you know on the show <laughs> Walking Dead. What what's your plan? Well, well, actually, I mean, maybe not to that extreme, but <clears throat> back with the October snowstorm uh, uh -huh. was that 2011. Not only was I uh, chairman of the board of selectmen in Belchertown, I was also the emergency manager, uh, manager for my, uh, my cornerstone, which is the subsidiary of, of Mass Mutual. So that Sunday morning, as I kind of unburied myself, I came to the realization that, oh my gosh, I have a town that's in a shambles, and I have a company that's <laughs> going to be in a shambles come tomorrow morning. So I had to kiss my wife on the cheek and say, honey, I'm not sure when you're going to see me next because yeah. I have to get in. And I, I knew Mass Mutual has several different. I work you know, within the insurance industry and several of the carriers were down. Yeah. And, and <laughs> well, I, the, the good thing with Mass Mutual is I knew from, you know, manage, uh, emergency management meetings, I knew they had like literally three different feeds going into their yeah. data center. So I said, if anyone has power, Mass Mutual does. Yeah. I'm getting in there. Yeah. It literally, usually it would take me about a half an hour to get to Mass Mutual. It took me closer to an hour and a half to get there. But I finally made it in there. <clears throat> My first call was actually to our town administrator, the gentleman I was talking about, who was off uh, in the Adirondacks 
uh, hunting. He went for his, his annual hunting trip. And I told her, I said, Gary, I said, uh, I'm going to give you the opportunity to say you never got this phone call. But <laughs> <laughs> I said, y you are coming back to a disaster. And I said, literally a disaster. Like the entire town is out. And there are streets that we can't get to yet. <clears throat> and, you know, the God, God helped Belchertown. Thank God we, we had Gary there. He said, give me a few hours, I'll be there. <clears throat> but in the meantime, what I did is I... I called the fire chief, I called our senior center uh, director to open up the senior center for as a you know, warming place or place that had electricity because we had generators there. Also called the school superintendent and we set up our high school as really kind of our, our Noah's Ark, if you will. <clears throat> and we had a lot of generation, um, external generation power at the high school because it was our designated area. And we had showers and so on and so forth. So we started to get a lot of that coordinated. <clears throat> and sure enough, here comes, here comes Gary in on his white horse. And I said, okay, I've done what I can do to get the ball rolling. I said, I'm gonna trust you can, oh, yeah. you can take your ball and run with it. I said, because I got about 400 employees <laughs> <laughs> that Monday morning at 8 o'clock are going to be saying, what do we do, Ron? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sure enough, <clears throat> I now get them on the phone. I'm talking to our CEO, and we're setting up all our contingencies. I'm setting up some stuff. And luckily, we were actually based out of Hartford at the time. And I mean, thank you, God, but our building actually had power. There was a yeah. lot of areas. Axe Equitable, I know, was out for three weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah cause, I mean, Connecticut. Yeah, life was down in uh, yeah, Con in Bloomfield. Yeah. yeah, Connecticut got hit hard, yeah. but thank God, because yeah. maybe because it was in downtown Hartford, it, it was still up. So we were able to use that once again, I guess, as my, my business is Noah's Ark. And we had some of our satellite offices all congregate there and basically spent Sunday night with a couple of my guys setting up uh, our main conference room and our, our other large conference room. Really, it's just rows of, of PCs that people could you know, use as a charging station and get so, some work done. And it actually went, I mean, very, very smooth considering the, the issues that, you know, that potentially could have occurred. But it made it, it. Maybe it wasn't the zombie ap cop apocalypse, but it was. It, it was, was getting apocalypse. close. It was <laughs> yeah. still apocalypse. Yeah, been there, lived, lived through that. So, okay. That's all of my questions. And it's funny, you answered some of my questions in, in just that. in conversation oh, okay. in general. <laughs> I go like that. Yeah. Um, I, I have a question to ask. Um, sure. in, my, uh, in your experience, having worked in both um, town government and in the private sector, um, what do you see as some of the, uh, the main differences uh, between the two, uh, specifically in how they, uh, what they would be for someone in the role of town administrator? Yeah. versus uh, someone in your role as an IT manager in the private sector. Yeah, I, I guess I would, I would equate the town administrator to really almost kind of being the president or chief operating officer mm -hmm. of, a, of a private company. And I think probably the biggest thing is the, the transparency. I mean, mm -hmm. transparency is set by law uh, on the municipal side. And it, in the private sector, one of the other big differences was we didn't have to deal with unions. It was a complete non-union from, from A to Z. Um, but with the transparency, in fact, one of the things as new select board members would join, and if they had management experience in the private sector, I'd try to give them a little orientation saying, you don't, don't think you can take whatever worked in the private sector and just superimpose it into the municipal sector because it's not going to work. You're, awesome. you're only going to get yourself in a lot of trouble. I said the key there is to learn what you can do and what you can't do. And if you have any questions, ask first. Don't, don't try to force that round peg into the square hole. <clears throat> so I, I, I guess I would say the, the example I use in the private sector you can make a hiring decision, you can make a major policy decision, and it's all gonna happen in your conference room with you know, a handful of key people, and that decision's gonna come from the top down, and it just gets forced, and it's gonna happen. 
I mean, people, you know, maybe people in that second layer of management realize why the decision was made or whatever, but it's solely up to upper management whether or not how much information they want to push down. Obviously, that's not how it works in the municipal sector. <laughs> Anything is, you know, even minor, minor details uh, and minor issues are fully, you know, discussed in open session. And everybody, you know, knows you know, what your feeling was on that and why you voted this way or, or that way. So it's that transparency, I think, it's much more apparent in municipal than you would see in the private sector. Mm -hmm. Which, I, I mean, I think is a good thing, frankly. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> even in the private sector, there's certainly major policy decisions. I wish senior management would have pushed the information down so we knew why we were zigging instead of zagging. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously in the municipal sector, it's you know, probably not the case. If, Anyone's paying even the you know slight bit of attention, they should know why the board decided to go one one direction versus another. Yeah, the uh, board of directors is not of a private company does not meet in open session. <laughs> that is very correct. <laughs> <laughs> and there are no quorum rules on the golf course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Greg. I'm going to go with some more tricky questions that I've asked all night. I oh, guess. All right. The town is facing a significant budget shortfall due to unexpected tax revenue declines, how would you prioritize spending cuts while minimizing the impact on essential services? Ah, well, I, I, I think that is a discussion to occur with department heads. Um, I, I'm a firm believer that the best decisions are made by the one and best recommendations are made by those that are closest to a, to a decision. But that being said, I think it's obviously very important to, to have the select board and, and other boards and committees involved in those discussions as well. Generally, you, you all are seeing it from a higher level, that 30,000 foot level, if you will, <clears throat> and that's gonna drive priorities. That's gonna drive you know, the best for the town type of thing. Um, you know, someone, a department head is gonna see things for their department and what their department can do. It's gonna take someone that you know at the select board level at that higher higher level to say <clears throat> i see what you're saying but you know th this is a priority so we're going to concentrate more on this and then like i said that's before now it's up to the town administrator and the direct reports to say okay let's let's make this happen you know we'll, this is what we have to work with this is the hand we have let's make it let's do the best we can with it mm -hmm. and i mean those are obviously the the toughest decisions is, is making cuts and prioritizing everything so it really is i think has to be collaborative or it just not it's not going to work for the simple fact that people are say, oh well you know they just never liked me they have to know why this is a priority and why that cut has to occur mm -hmm. i can go with another one <laughs> go for it you go for it uh Town's considering a controversial development or just controversial project in general uh, with very divided residents. How would you facilitate a productive public discussion, manage competing interests, and make recommendations to the select board? Yeah, well, and I think that's the key. I think what you have to do is you have to have, I'll, I'll refer to them as informational sessions. <clears throat> and those informational sessions should be open to the public. And that's where questions need to be addressed is one of the things I've certainly seen throughout the years in, in government is there's that controversial issue and unless you can get the facts out there and if there's a vacuum of information, that vacuum is going to be filled with the most negative possible scenarios, whether they're factual or not. But once they're in that vacuum and they're filling that vacuum, heaven help you to try to dispel and dissuade people from actually believing that's the fact. So I think you have to be out in front of it. You have to recognize, yep, there's, this is polarizing, but these are the facts. People will ask their questions and you disseminate the facts. And as I said, it's better if everyone's in the same room, so everyone's hopefully hearing the same thing. And then once you've had those informational sessions, try to memorialize them. You know, here's what some of the questions were, here's what, the answers were, and I think it's very fair in those sessions if someone says, well, what about X? You know, I, I never considered that. Well, we're, gonna have to, we're gonna have to look into that. That's a, that's a good point. I, I never thought about it. Did anyone else? No. 
And now it's obviously very incumbent, <laughs> whatever that question was, whatever the answer that you didn't have, get the answer and then once again disseminate it so that everyone knows what it is. And I think that's the only way, because <clears throat> hopefully at that point, even though it is controversial, it would probably, it's, I mean, for something that large, it probably ends up being a town meeting vote. And, you know, let, let democracy rule, you know, one person, one vote. And yeah, if not, then you know, obviously it falls on, on you all to, to make those difficult decisions. But once again, you would have the forum to be able to say, you know what, I'm voting in favor. Here's why I'm voting in favor based upon the facts. And if we've done our job correctly in getting the facts out and addressing those questions, people will be able to say, well, okay, I don't agree, but at least I understand how they reach that decision based upon the facts. I think we're at the what questions does he have for us portion of the program. I was going to ask, is it time for that portion of the program? So <laughs> Do your, turn, your turn to ask. <coughs> um, well, actually, uh, some of the questions were answered, but um, the stabilization fund uh, balance. It is about, it is seven or eight percent of the operating budget, so that would make it about seven or eight hundred thousand dollars. Okay, uh, for so. operating stabilization, we have some capital stabilization also, uh, probably 150 to 200. I don't have a computer and the numbers in, are in the spreadsheet. I could. Beth might be able to look it up. It's in the budget spreadsheet, Beth. Is it in the budget spreadsheet? I think so. It might be in big picture. His numbers might be from Lori. They're somewhere. I can't remember where they are. Big picture sheet. I've seen them. Uh, maybe. Big, no, big picture is something I created, and it wasn't from Lori. It's somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, give me five minutes in front of my computer, and I can find it. But well, I, so, I was yeah, say, so we're so we're we're in that range. We're so when, when you include capital, it brings you up around probably ten percent. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's I mean, nice it's like, it may be more like operating is at six, and with capital, we're at eight. Okay, it's but just still. Yeah. Pretty solid. Yeah, it, we're we're we're, def, we're, def, we're in the five to ten percent range. That, that's a that's a good range to be in. Yeah, probably close. To um, with regards to free cash, is that utilized for operating uh, operational expenses? Never. No, never. Our never. policy good is answer. to use, <laughs> for, use free cash for one-off uh, expenses, project and capital uh, acquisitions. Got it. Got it. Okay. Like the fire department needs a new air compressor. So it's like that's that's on the award. That's a that's an article in this, the town warrant coming up. Gotcha. And for free cash, is that usually um, dispersed through a special town meeting, or do you wait all the way to annual? We, we typically um, we have typically wound up waiting. So the free cash that was certified back in October is uh, up, is being allocated through the the annual town meeting coming up in June. Gotcha. It's okay. like I mean if there were a need, we would call a special town meeting, but it's if it can wait, why I don't think have we've ever, we've, we haven't so done much it in needed, a few years. It's, if we had a special, I think we did it. If, yeah. if. My, my opinion has always been that the, the annual town meeting is when we are thinking budget things, yeah. and so therefore it makes sense to, and everyone, that's when everyone knows this is when we're divvying up the money and allocating it based on priority. And if we do something, a special town meeting, if it's not an emergency, now people are trying to get them a, a, an, in early consideration. And I just, I'd rather just give everyone the chance to have an equal shot at the money. <laughs> I, I hear you. Yeah. It, it's a lot easier to, when you have that type of equity without someone mm -hmm. saying, oh. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and typically we avoid having fall specials unless like one year we did it because our police contract finalized after annual town meeting. So we wanted to do it before the tax rate was set so that we were actually accurately setting a tax rate and had an appropriate budget in place okay. before it. So, so it sounds like it's pretty rare and it takes something very special. We used, we used to do more specials and we've gotten out of the habit and I think it's probably good that we've gotten out yeah. of the habit. I think our last special was uh, triggered by a, uh, a citizen petition. I think you're right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we so, get quite a few. So we had to. So we had. So they 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 got the signatures. So we had a town meeting because that's what the law says. And that's one of those differences between the private sector and the public sector. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 
the private sector, boss? No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, ARPA funds, I believe they've been all expended or pretty much. Pretty, pretty much. much. We yeah. might have some res residual. I'm it's not a, sure that we spent quite all the way through it. If they haven't been enough. spent, the, the majority of what hasn't been spent has been allocated. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, because I know that has to be encumbered by the end of this calendar right. year. So mm -hmm. it sounds like we're all set there. Okay, so now I guess my, my interview question for you guys. What do you all see as the biggest challenge or, or oh, issue? I forgot to ask my question. Oh, okay, look at that. See, I, I, I fed you one there. You did. <laughs> oh, Tell you? me about the last time you had somebody angry in your face and how you handled it. Oh, well, I do have three grown daughters. So. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined three lives. Well, well, that speaks well yeah. of you because they live to adulthood and you live for them that's, to get that's to true. So. Well, my, my, my wife is, is a very special lady, so she, she had a lot to do with that. Um, well, I'll, I'll, once again, I'll, I'll stick to the municipal. Um, I... <laughs> And this was actually not last campaign, but two campaigns ago. I had the sweetest looking little old lady, grandmotherly type. Uh, I had a, a standout, you know, informational uh, uh, standout had handouts and things along those lines. And she comes up to me, so I'm expecting, you know, a nice little interaction. And I have my handout all set to give it to her. And I just starting to hand it over to her and she kind of gives it the old push out of the way and, wow. yeah and i said oh is it what's the problem she goes i know the problem it's you aponte i was like oh boy this is oh dear go well. <laughs> <laughs> and she said you're in this for the money you you're a money grubber i was like do you have any idea how much we make is on the select board? I would literally make more money if I asked if you'd like fries with that, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> and no. Yeah, I yeah, wish we yeah, could get to yeah, that yeah, salary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah their, their, their budget is five times ours, and he only gets paid $800 more than we do. <laughs> so she's accusing me of you know, being a money grubber and this, that, and the other thing. And I tried to explain to her. I said, no. I said, where, where are you getting your information from? She, I'm not stupid. I can read the reports. Well, she was lo looking at the annual budget report, which is, you know, it's classic spreadsheet form. And under selectmen, it's it, like $300,000. Right? Yes, because it, it has the uh, town administrator under oh, that. Geez. It has the, uh, the town administrator's uh, administrative assistant. And there's some other miscellaneous things for meetings and dues and so on and so forth. So she's thinking that's each selectman's salary, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so I you know, was trying to explain it to her. And she was, she was calming down a little bit. But it, luckily, I actually had that. And so I was able to, you know, rifle through my stuff and was able to pull out the, the budget report. And I explained, I said, no, that's, I said, look, I said, the town administrator's salary isn't anywhere else in here. It's under that line item. I said, that's, there's actually detail underneath that. I said, it's, it, you know, for brevity's sake, it's not broken down by each individual account and in, in, uh, chart, you know, in our chart of accounts. Well, after, I mean, literally probably about 10 minutes of, am I going to have to call the, the chief of police here you know, to get the taser out? <laughs> and finally got her to a point where she, she didn't think I was necessarily a money grubber. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know if I actually got her vote, mm -hmm. but at least she, she was able to calm down just by... I, I, in a situation like that, I'm going to use it because this is also kind of funny, but I think it also it shows if you can let people vent, a lot of times they just want to vent. They just want to get it out. And if you sit there and you actually really listen to them, they feel a heck of a lot better. Like I said, may, they might not walk out the door saying, wow, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add him to my Christmas list. But at least they felt as though, okay, I, I got my gripe out on the table. He heard me. We had a discussion and a dialogue about it. I'll go away, maybe not a happy, but I'll, I'll be able to go away at least semi-satisfied. So I think that's always your, your best bet. Let them, let them vent, and once they're done venting, if there's something, obviously there's something not factual, such as you know, with, the, with the old lady, try to introduce the facts. Say, well, this is, this is the reality of the situation. You know? your, your facts are incorrect or incomplete. Um, but I think the key there, like I said, just, just let them get it off their chest. 
And I, I mean, honestly, frankly, that even works in, in the private sector. That, that, that worked for me as well. Um, IT guys can be uh, passionate a bit ab about their, their work, and if someone disagrees with it, they, they take it very personally, I've noticed. <laughs> and you just, once again, just, just let them vent, let them get it out, and then, you know, move on. Coming back to his question. So his question was what, what the challenge is? Yeah, what's, the what's, the, what's the biggest challenge? What's the one that keeps you up at night? Um, I, the, one that keep, the one that I would say is the most immediate concern is that we, we, have, some, uh, we, have, some, we have some transition in the personnel. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, I mean, that is, it's, I won't call it a crisis, but crisis is danger and opportunity. And so, therefore, it's like, I mean, we're, lo we're losing good people, but there's a chance to I mean, maybe do better, or, or at least I'd like to think we can keep things going as well as they have been going. I mean, one, the assessor's going, that's not under the select board's control, that's under the board of assessor's control. But we have, a, uh, we have an interim treasurer, um, we have an interim grant writer, and we have a new highway superintendent starting, starting, starting next like, Monday. Yeah, uh -huh. starting next Monday, okay. yeah. yeah. So we, so, okay, and so, so that's and so that's and, and so the just, highway is under us. Okay. okay yes. That's good. We, yeah. We we a week ago yesterday we had him in here and we signed the and he, we signed the letter. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So and so we and so it's just that's that's it's just so that's with the transition there's going to be some storming as new people come in sure. and settle into their roles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, okay. I so get so that. And so it's it's navigating. The, it's navi That's a that's a challenge that the uh, whoever we select is going to have to help us navigate. Got it. Okay. And it, and I think another thing too is being the town that we are, being mostly residential, um, we don't have a lot of sources for income other than residential taxes. Yeah. So changing, or at least working towards something to, or at least being it. If we don't bring business in, we need to figure out more grant opportunities yep. um, and being able to identify those and identify projects and how to fund the projects. And, well, I, I think, frankly, a good step is the fact that you all at least have a grant writing position. Mm -hmm. um, I've been trying for probably 10 years or nearly 10 years to get a grant writing position in, in the town it's of Belchertown. It more, it, than, is, it more than pays for itself. It, it was one of yeah. the best decisions the previous board made was to bring that person in. Because they, they, they don't just write the grants, they administer them. Exactly. And, that's, and, and if, if you are looking into that, I would recommend you get someone who could administer the grants because then you make then you com complete the requirements and you get the money or you don't have to refund what they gave you. Oh, exactly. It's a, this is this is we have been able to do so much with the money that the that position has put in. Yeah, we've got so much more money in to the town than what we have paid that person for doing it. Yeah, it's yeah. like we, we are we are figuring out how we're filling that position. And like you said, it's really twofold because not only is it getting the money in, but it's so important to have the follow-up. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the follow-up. The administration mm -hmm. can can be worse. I mean, it almost always is worse than the actual grant writing and the application itself. Because if you don't dot that I, cross that yeah. T. I mean, frankly, I, I've heard some real horror stories. Mm -hmm. Luckily, not in Belchertown, but in, in other towns where that exactly happened. They didn't file this report or didn't do something or other and now the government or you know be a fed or state is saying okay guess what you didn't you didn't adhere to to the rules and regulations Spit we want up. we want that money back <laughs> and good luck because no, no one budgets for that <laughs> exactly yeah um Okay, so I, I yeah, and, and as far as the, because I did notice you guys are probably around what 10, 11 percent is business and 89, 90 percent is on the tax. I rate. would say we're closer to five percent business. I think according to DLS, it's it's almost 10 percent. But really, okay. Yeah. I'm not sure. I know, I know, I know when, when we, we Al presents it to us at the reclassification. <laughs> right, it, I, but I think it does. Yeah. Well, I think it's mostly by zoning and yeah, right. I know. Yeah, it, it goes by Gavit. So we had a large factory right here, and yeah. they've since relocated to another town. Mm, that hurts. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and that yeah. property is going to be for sale. So the redevelopment of that is something that that, is, yeah, that, that will be something we. Would it's going to be a really pi it's going to be a really pivotal point, and I don't know that we're involved as much as we potentially could be 
And, and I think that's where, once again, with you all being a designated economic target area, because um, one of the things in Belchertown that we've done is we've partnered up with uh, Mass Development, and that's been huge talk about grants. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, those, those folks are talking to the governor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so that's, a, that's very good having that insider, if you will, in Boston to be able to talk to the right people and kind of get you, you know, in the grant, your grant application, go to the top of the list, that's humongous. And I mean, it certainly helped Belchertown with our old state school lands because unfortunately they, the state left it a, an absolute mess when, when, they, when they left. And um, mass development's been an absolute godsend, just getting grants to help remediate some of those environmental issues. So someone like a mass development, not only are they good at the, the grants and things along those lines, but they're, they're very good from a marketing perspective because as soon as someone's expressing any interest in coming to Massachusetts, Usually that's going to hit mass development and it's going to be on their, their, their uh, to-do list. And kind of along those lines, I mean, we also have a site uh, on Route 9, which is a major part of our business section that is a brownfield site and uh -huh. yes. uh, has DEP loans and back taxes and all that. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we had 166 acres of brownfield. <laughs> <laughs> 22 Was buildings. Uh, not all of it yet. Um, we have one, two, three, well, four. four. Four buildings left that have to be remediated. Unfortunately, one is the old power plant, which is probably the biggest one. But we're actually in the process right now of working with mass development to get the grants to be able to, to bring that down. And that's... The and I, I mean, and I've been researching that. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of grants for town municipalities to remediate these sites. Yeah, exactly. And I guess that's a, the, the one good thing is that with Brown, I mean, no one wants to have a Brownsfield, especially right. in, in a, a business nice business right. zone when you're limited with your business zone. But I think the state has recognized that. And as I said, I mean, 351 uh, municipalities in, in Massachusetts want to increase their business tax base. So they realize, okay, for the betterment of the, the entire state and individual towns, we have to be able to provide those grants to clean those things up because what developer is ever going to touch it with a 10-foot pole knowing there's potentially millions of dollars of hazardous material there? Right. And so I, I, I think that would be a, a big thing, a massive element. Couple that together with, with the economic target area. Now, once again, last, as we were talking you know, earlier, now, from a marketing perspective, you can say, hey, we have an attractive, uh, uh, yeah, an attractive parcel over here that might be able to work for you, and we can give you some tax incentive, perhaps, to sweeten the offer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are the types of things that we've had some success with. And as I said, if you, if you can get a partnership with Mass Development, it's worth his weight in gold. Mm -hmm. In fact, we, we even told the police chief, I mean, only half tongue in cheek, if, if they're late for a meeting and they're, they're speeding through town, yeah. you look the other up. way. <laughs> <laughs> Give them an escort. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a better idea. <laughs> better idea. <laughs> All right. uh, I think that's pretty much it for, for the questions I had. Yes, any, any last questions for me? I can't think of any. How, um, so if we were to choose you, how soon as, would... As soon as you need someone. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I think we're looking to do something. I, I think the, for, from a timetable, uh, I think we will probably select a, uh, a, a, a first choice candidate in the next week or two. And then at that point, negotiations would start sure. um, for um, w whether we can uh, come to an agreement. And then the thought is, is that by the time that all finishes, I expect all the work going into town meeting would pretty much be done. It would be, not, I, I think it would be preferable if we could have someone come in or at least be at town meeting. But my thought is, is that we're probably not going to be able to bring someone on to finish, do most of the heavy lifting ahead of town meeting. But after town meeting, there is getting ready for end of year sure. and such. And so it's like, I, I know that's been very clear that 
We're <laughs> going to we're 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 looking to have this locked up in three to four weeks and be able to announce a be an, mm-hmm. announce a, a uh, who's coming into the position. We're going to be as expeditious as we can I'm given the restrictions, <laughs> the restrictions of municipal yes. government. Yes, <laughs> you're, you're, you're a five member select board, so you can talk to another select board member and not have quorum. That's we're three. Right. I, we cannot discuss anything about the process because wow. Brad and I go into a room and we have quorum. <laughs> and therefore we cannot discuss business. Wow, that's a good point. Which I never is, thought about which that. Which is tricky because his, his son and my daughter are in the same grade. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chance meeting so, in the parking well, lot. I mean, yeah. as long as we, I mean, we can talk, we just can't talk about town business. Yeah. So, I mean, right. it, but anytime it, anybody sees two to, to it's not Two good. Of it, you know, oh gosh, yeah. Like, <laughs> That's when the so rumor mill starts picking geez, up geez, speed. If we, if we chit chat after we, if we adjourn the meeting and then there's a little chit chat going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard him over there at the mm-hmm. at the corner store talking mm-hmm. about it. They said they were town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure, I'm sure Belchertown has its share of people who uh, take who also take a passionate interest in keeping a beady eye on the electorate. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah, and it wasn't just the little old lady at the corner. <laughs> 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 um, All right then. Yeah, well, I think I think we're good. All right. Well, if you have any other questions, please uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, Karen will forward it on to us because I think okay. she was your point of contact. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Originally, Good Charlie. Sense. Now, Karen. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, Mark. Great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Pleasure. That brings us to the end of the interviews. That does bring us to the end. Is there any? Is there any discussion of the uh, of the candidates that we would uh, like to uh, conduct? Before we adjourn the meeting, or do we just want to mull? Do we want to uh, just mull and ponder this and come back uh, at a future date? It's past my bedtime. I do have a firing order of like who I would hire, but I mean, one of the nice things is uh, I'm just going to make this general statement about the candidates. Mm-hmm. Unlike when we had two highway supers in mm-hmm. and. I voted for none of the above. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do have a preferential order, but I also feel like we could throw the three names in a hat, pull one out, and not do the town a disservice. So it's a nice position to be in. I, I, think, mm-hmm. um, I think that um, it's going to be figuring out which one is, we've, is coming, converging on which one is the best, but I'm also of the opinion that we have three good candidates. Yeah, so I know what my firing order is. Mm-hmm. Me too. <laughs> so, do we want to just talk about it? Or because we don't have it on the agenda to vote, we can't? Um, I believe that, be- I would say because it's not on the agenda, we cannot vote on it. But I think we can discuss, uh, we I can think we discuss, can discuss our impressions thoughts. of the candidates because I can't imagine that, I mean, that, it, yeah. that we would not be able to, after talking to them, have the opportunity to share our thoughts and compare notes. Yeah, I mean, based on based on what I saw tonight, and thank goodness navigational capability is not one of the job requirements of a town administrator. <laughs> <laughs> well, he says he's good with technology. He's like, God, Google, how do I find 6 Central Street? <laughs> so I think where you're going is what I'm going to say is I would go number one with him. Yeah. My biggest concern is are we going to be able to afford them? And how well, yeah. long will we and stay? I, and I, and I, yeah. So, 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 well, so, I think part of the, yeah, I, I, I don't know the answer to those other questions. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where having a firing order in our head is good because right. Um, I know we're not voting it tonight, but we could conceivably come back and say, yes, this is our agreed upon firing order. And then if we can't come to terms, then we don't have to come back together to vote again to then negotiate with the next yeah, person. That, that we, we basically, we rack them one to three. We rack them, stack them one to three. And if we can't close on one, we only know who number two is. Right. I, I think that makes, I think that makes sense because otherwise we lose time if, we are yeah. unable, if we get it, to the it, point where we know we're not going to be able to, we get to an impasse with number right. one, we know the, we're not going to close. The, the other thing is, is every single person that walked in here 
Our budget is a public document. If they didn't walk in knowing at least the order of magnitude of what we can offer them, they shouldn't have wasted our time by walking and, in. Here. And they all have select board experience. They all understand the restrictions under which we operate with the budget. So, so they, so they I, should I'm know not, what they're getting I'm not into. that concerned that we can't afford them. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we didn't ask the question, and I usually ask the question, but because we didn't ask, we just got it offered with the other candidate that, that isn't currently employed and mm -hmm. didn't ask. Um, you know, but he's no longer employed with the, with bearings, right? Mm -hmm. Since 20, the uh, resume ends at 2023. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's, you know, it's one of those scenarios where I'm presuming, I am making an assumption, I'm totally making an assumption that he wouldn't have walked in the room with us if we were at least somewhere in the neighborhood of what he found acceptable. Mm -hmm. So, so we can think on it. Mm -hmm. And I have to think about it because my two and three is... Am I allowed, to, I mean, are you yeah. leaning towards him for one? I'm leaning towards him for one, yeah. I, I feel the same. Okay. That I, I, th I think, we, and then I would say I, I, I liked, I like them in reverse order. Yeah. I think for once, without even trying, we may actually be unanimous, though so I, I can, so I like the so I like the third guy. I'm just concerned with some of the experiments. I think it'll be a, I think there'll be a little bit more yeah. learning curve. Right. Actually, I think I actually had some learning curve concerns with actually the, with, with the, two yeah. as well. Yeah. I think they I think they will have different learning curve right. challenges. Right. Yeah. And um, but so I could almost flip my two and three and 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 not have I wouldn't lose in a wink of sleep over it. If that makes any sense, yeah, it's, and, it's and I and I think close. they have the right temperaments to to do the learning that they would have to do. Mm -hmm. So, so what what I would suggest is that we think we, on it. we think on it. We talk to people that we care to consult, who may yeah. have some experience with them, or may be watching the videos and such, or just may say, "Did you think of this? Did you think of this?" And let's put this on the let's put this on the agenda for consideration um, this Thursday or Friday ahead of our six fifteen schedule I'm meeting. Down with that. And I think that way it's like and if we hopefully we will be able to converge on something and agree on something and have an actionable path forward at that point. I mean I think that I mean I'm I think we all know what it. we would do if we had to vote now, but I think that just given where we are, I, I think taking a little more time and making Thinking about it and looking things over is not going to hurt. So the I'm going to tell you, it's not, I'm not so much going to be thinking stuff over as, as doing some reconnaissance. Okay. But uh, that's um. But that's yeah. that's not a bad use of time either. Yeah. It's like I just for, for things like this, I always like to leave them in the back of my head for a while if the schedule permits. Sometimes, sometimes I think of something I say, oh, I should have thought of that. So what time do we want to um, meet them next Thursday? Uh, let's see. I guess, what time could you join us early? Um, can you do 5.45? I hate you, but yes. <laughs> I, could, I could put it, actually, you know what? Is that enough no, time? No, 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 stop, stop, stop. Minutes, yeah. I, Beth, I could, do the, I could put this on the agenda for after our 6.15 meeting, because we're not bringing anyone else in, so it's, it's not like I gotta schedule someone else for a special time. So I can just put it on the agenda after the 6.15 executive session. Would that be better for you? It would be better for then you. Then let's do that. Be honest. Okay. It's yeah. like, it, I don't think, I don't see us, I don't see things running we, super late on Thursday. Yeah, we can reconvene well, an open meeting and there's a high statistical likelihood that that executive session would be open meeting anyway. So, yeah. just because it's yeah. it's a tradition here in the town of Brookfield. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, All right. Does anyone, does anyone want a copy of the letters of reference from? I would like copy. Right, I'd easy from yeah, Brian yeah, Moriarty. Yeah, have right, them, I, I, then I'll make yeah. I'll make copies for I'll make copies for all of us, and I'll leave the originals with Karen since they're technically public documents. Okay. All right. Thank Mo you. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. You read my mind. All right. All in favor of adjourning at nine.
49. Please say aye. 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 Oh, thank God, aye. <laughs> <laughs>